Lucky for us, life is full of choices, big and small. They define us, make us who we are. And when it comes time for you to choose a car, home, your next big adventure, or start a new business, Farmers Union Insurance has the variety of coverage options to protect each perfect moment. Farmers Union Insurance. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Wapitan Deli and Eatery, serving delicious deli staples paired with great service and friendly staff. They use the best ingredients and provide a great atmosphere. If you have an office party or an at-home celebration, Wapitan Deli and Eatery can help with your next event. And now you can order online for in-store pickup. Check it out at wapitandeliandeatery.com or call 642-3639. In this place, we see potential like nowhere else. Here, vision is boundless. That's why we never settle. We look for the moments when everything becomes possible. The moments that inspire us to make every day better. In this place, there's no such thing as good. There's only great. This is orthopedics and sports medicine like nowhere else. The folks at Tyler Farm Supply understand that farming is hard work, and that's why they only offer durable and reliable short-line farm equipment that you can depend on. Whether you're a small-scale farmer or manage a large operation, they have the tools that you need to get the job done quickly and efficiently. Plus, with their competitive pricing and financing options, Tyler Farm Supply makes it easy for you to get the equipment you need without breaking the bank. Give them a call today, 701-642-8827. Every business begins with an idea. With dedication, hard work, and high-speed broadband, that idea can grow into something giant. The member organizations that form BAND are proud to support North Dakota businesses every step of the way, from the soil to the stadium. The Broadband Association of North Dakota, helping North Dakotans grow bright ideas into big business. Five, yeah, four, three, three. That's what a good producer two. would do. You know what? I'm going to get a little <laughs> deal, and I'm going to hit a button, and it's going to say on air. <laughs> there you go. How about That'll that? be the next thing. Right. Well, welcome, everybody, to Three Borders Sports Network, and uh, welcome to the Giants Coaches Show. You're our first one of the spring season. It's also presented to you by Red River Communications and Red River Communications Cable Channel 28. Are we all good now, Brian? We're all good? We're good. Do it okay. five? No, I'm sorry. No. We're good. Yeah, we're, we're over good. that stage here's, right now. Here's the thing now. So okay. he's been in the building for a little bit. Yeah, things okay. are working good. And right now, everything is working. All right. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Pressure's on you now. I walk out the door, I hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got a full slate of coaches tonight. We got a busy night here with just about everybody showing up tonight for all our spring coaches. Uh, uh, we did invite Scott Albertson, the uh, Cowgirls golf coach, to attend, and he was unable to make it and uh, did not hear for sure from Stan Goldaddy, uh, but I do not think he will be here as well. So both golf coaches for Breckenridge will not be here, but we got both coaches from uh, Breck Track going to be here, and uh, Jake Dodge will be here for BW Softball. We got a full slate of coaches tonight, and of course we're joined here first up, as always, with the head coach of uh, the Wapitan Boys Huskies golf squad. Here's Jeff Ralph. Well, two days, three days of practice. We get rained on the first day, which, I mean, that tells you it's golf season now. <laughs> we get rained on, and then 
Uh, we played yesterday, a beautiful day today. Um, I, I mean, I can't believe we're out at Boyusu. Did you did you actually get to do some uh, holes and go around the golf course yep. then? So we you... actually, on Monday when it was raining, we, we sent out our older boys, okay. and they just played one, two, nine, so they would only be out there for maybe oh, sure. 45 minutes because it was raining, but we, we got out and played, and um, you know, it's, you can tell we're a little rusty, Yeah. but, um, I, I, you know, it's just amazing that we're at Boydie Sioux. I mean, the, the last few years have been tough. Yeah. Um, I think it, I talked to Stan at, at practice today and he said something about, uh, last week at this time we, had, or last year at this time we had 20 inches of snow or something. Oh. We had a snowstorm or I, I, I don't remember it, but we I had so many storms that, um, I do remember going to South Dakota for that two-day event we had last year, and we're going this year, too. And the closer we got to home, the more snow there was Ugh. in the ditches. So I, I, the course is ready. You can play. I mean, yep. they, they mowed greens, and um, it's, I mean, it's not in prime shape, but okay. uh, we're out on the golf course, which is really nice. The range is open. Um, so kids are, you know, and we got, we have 24 kids. We have uh, Tim Welder, uh, his six-year golf. Uh, six which is, year. He toughed it out for, for six years. And you know, our lone senior, uh, we have two juniors, uh, Bjorn Kubala, Aiden Bone, six sophomores. Um, Michael Peterson, probably our, our top returner in that sophomore group, uh, averaged 95 last year, played in every tournament, uh, had a great shot at qualifying for state and just kind of run into a little trouble on a, on a hole and, and missed it. You know, I'd shoot 79, shot 81. Uh, our low round of the year, and I really thought he struck the ball well uh, yesterday when I watched him today in practice too. Um, really strikes it well. And then Bjorn, Bjorn was our low average last year. Um, I think those are probably our top two guys returning. Okay. Um, but you know, six sophomores out. Uh, Garnett Anderson played varsity last year. Jordan Jensen a little bit last year. Um, three freshmen and then 12 middle school kids who are. Um, some of them brand new to golf, like you know they show up with their with their dad's clubs and <laughs> just trying to see if they can maybe figure yeah. something out. And yeah, play. that's all right. But uh, you know, there's a couple eighth graders. I think Tyler Birchill, uh, you know, he might challenge for a spot maybe somewhere down the line. Nolan Casty, another kid that we think might you know might have a chance. And then we have three uh, three seventh graders. Two of them, you know, I really. Uh, uh, Kyler Flack, really a nice swing, and mm -hmm. and uh, Peyton Miller, just a little guy, but probably one of the nicest swings of all the kids in our in our program, and hasn't really played golf. I mean, obviously he's played some, You're right? Just by watching him swing, but um, you know, I, I think there's some there's some kids that are going to be some golfers here in the future, and uh, we're really young, you know, with with one senior and two juniors, and. Both Bjorn and, and Aiden Bone have played a lot of our yep, golf, so yep, a lot yep. of experience. Um, but just haven't had that breakthrough where they, you know, they they chop it down and get to 85 or 84. And um, you know, each I think we talked before about how each barrier, you break 100, that's somewhat easy. Yep. Breaking 90 is tougher, and breaking 80 is tougher. So we're getting there, but we really have a good crew of kids and. The, you know, at 4 o'clock, the golf course is just jam-packed with kids, so that's pretty cool. That's a good sign. I, 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 I know we had talked, like you said before, you hit that, you break that 100. Now, all of a sudden, I want to break to 95 or maybe even 90, and, and yeah. that's important. So what are you going to look for now to round out the team? You mentioned two or three guys that are probably going to be up in your top six. Uh, how do you decide in the next few days, because you got a, a busy week next week, how do you decide in the next uh, two or three days here what you're going to do for yeah. rounding well, out the top six? Well, we played yesterday, and that was a qualifying round. Um, all those kids will play tomorrow after school, another qualifying round. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, you really just you go by score. Yep, um, that's all you if, can. That's if there right. are some intangibles, you know, what's happening in school or something like that yeah. <laughs> might, have a, might have an impact, but... Um, we really just go by the scores, and and then you know if it's if it's closer, kids are tied. Sometimes I look at who has varsity experience because I think uh, any golfer would tell you that competitive golf the first time, it's kind of tough. Yeah. You know, so I, I think we'd maybe go with go with experience, but um, you know I think our our crew of kids that played last year are kind of those that are in the lead right now in qualifying. So you know Bjorn and and uh, 
and Michael, yep. you know, they're they're at the top of the list right now already. So I, sure. I think they're solid. But then the other four, um, Connor Haugen's a freshman who um, he's right in the mix. Um, Grayson Casty, another freshman that's right in the mix. Um, you know, and then um, we we can actually at Village Green on Monday bring eight. Okay. So we will, and that could have some some bearing on uh, who goes to the the two tournaments in South Dakota, which. Uh, you think about a Eastern Dakota Conference regional golf tournament, and it's going to be in Madison, South Dakota, and Harrisburg, South Dakota, yeah. just so we get to play. And you know, yep. we could have played those here this year, but uh, you know, it'll it'll be a battle, I think, tomorrow for the boys to see uh, who comes out. An another uh, a sophomore kid, uh, uh, Wyatt Stav, um, I think, kind of figuring out golf. Really strikes the ball well. Um, has you just got to learn how to score where he. Hits the ball good and then yeah. can't get it on the green and then can't get it in the hole. But, yeah. you know, I, we can't talk about Watson's game too long with that problem. <laughs> but, but I think that once these kids figure that out, um, that's going to be our biggest thing. Is, yeah. you know, I, Michael, yesterday you, we go out and we play, and the, the greens aren't fantastic. I think they're rolling okay, but, you, you know, you three-putt the first two greens and you make a double where, man, you could have had a par, you yeah. know, yeah. if you one-putt. But... But I think that those things will come with, with just getting outside and getting some reps in. And um, you know, that we go back to March when the golf course was open. Well, these kids weren't out there playing then, mm -hmm. I and mean, they were still in at the end of basketball or end of hockey, whatever, and maybe just didn't get out. So yeah. Um, and you know, the the value of that golf, I don't know how valuable it really was. You know, maybe just to go out and say, man, I played on March 11th. Yeah. But, you know, I I don't think we really saw any advantage to doing that unless they'd been playing on a simulator all winter or something yep. so did you when did you start practice just on monday i was just going to say yep. it was just recently so, so you three days like in. last year you must have spent half your time up at sweet shots and now this year you yeah. haven't even been up there yet I don't no think we haven't had to go which no. is really nice that makes it nice yeah yep. i mean it, you figure you know you pay 200 bucks for an hour at sweet shots and it takes three hours to do it because it's an hour up, an hour back yeah. driving. So yeah. right? our our practice time is is way more productive with our two hours we get yeah. after school rather than spending three and driving yep. for two of it. So, yep. um, you know, and that that was a contingency plan for us with with the EDC is uh, to be able to go up to Sweet Shots, and if if Village Green wasn't going to happen on Monday, we were going to move it to Sweet Shots, but. Uh, the way the weather looks, everything will be good, and we'll Should be, be outside on Monday at Village Green, which that, is that's awesome, which is just fantastic. And Cheyenne is hosting that one. I think I saw it. Yep. It? Yep. yep. So I think. Yep. That's their their meet, and they, um, you know, they're one of the teams. I think that, you know, everybody's looked at the last two years back to back champs, and they, they've lost a ton. They got a couple really good kids back, but, you know, I think probably, um, they they've maybe fallen out of that top six. Um, as a preseason, you know, I think they got kids that are pretty good coming but we just don't know about them yet yeah. so we'll see yeah so you got a busy week next week you got the fifth i think i wrote down the well anyway monday you, you 15th uh, at village Green, yep, yep and then thursday friday in the south dakota thursday run. in madison at madison country club in madison south dakota uh one o'clock start time there and then we'll head to sioux falls and spend the night and go to yeah. harrisburg i think 15 minutes or something outside of um sioux falls and really a, a great golf course and i can't Oh, Spring Creek Golf okay. Course. Uh, really a great golf course in Harrisburg and uh, you know, uh, an opportunity for us to play. They, I mean, open arms welcomed us. And, uh, you know, it's kind of surprising. You know, it's a Friday yeah. where you'd think you wouldn't want to tie up your course until maybe 1.30 or 2 o'clock. But they, they really welcomed us. And it's been, oh, it was good. a fun trip last year. That's and good. I think it'll be even better this year with even better weather and the fact yeah. that we've been outside to play too. Yeah, that it makes it so much better, and and uh, you know we we got all the rest of the spring coaches coming in too, just getting out in April. Last year was almost May, I think, before you got <laughs> yeah. out. But uh, it, yep. it it just makes a difference for everything. Yeah, I think this South Dakota swing was maybe, you know, maybe six days later, five days later last year. Oh, okay. And uh, and we hadn't been outside. We just went there. That was the first time hitting I think outside. I remember that. So yeah, it was yeah. it was different. But I think today, even today, we. I mean, we just, just kind of went to the range and just bashed balls. I mean, yeah. just hit balls and kind of get in that rhythm. And, and you know, you need some of that. But yeah. but also we got a 
we got to tighten the screws because we're playing on Monday too. <laughs> so I, I, I'm excited. I, I, I just feel like our young kids are ready. You know, it's just a matter of we can put it together here in the, in the next couple of weeks. We're not going to be ready on Monday. You know, I don't see us shooting a 320 and and being in the top five or six. I, but I, I would like to see us, you know, where we manage the course a little better, be a little smarter than we have been, you know, in last year. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I think that'll come for us. I really do. So how many years have you been doing this now for the golf side? I think it's 22. 22 for boys and girls then when you do the uh, girls, girls in the fall? Girls is a little later. I think was girls is, a, is a, like 15 or something. But yeah. 22 years with the boys. I started in 2003, and uh, hmm. we, we've, had, we've had some pretty good teams. We've had some rough years too, yeah. but I, yeah. you know, I think this young team and, and with these kids, like I mentioned, a couple of those seventh graders, they stick with it and play golf. You know, that's, that's really what it takes. The, yeah. the kids you see playing golf, uh, you know, in, in the metro schools or, or Red River, mm -hmm. I mean, they play hockey and they play golf all the time. Yep. And that's yep. kind of our, you know, we're hoping to see some of these young kids do that too. Yep. Um, we, we talked about your, your roster here so far. Uh, assistant Coach Bockles back yep. again. Coach, Coach Bockles back, and he's, uh, he, he really kind of took the bull by the horns with the JVs. And I think we, you know, we have 12 tournaments or whatever it is, and JV has just as many. You know, we've yeah. had years where JV play once a week, so they'd play six tournaments and be done. And he's he's probably going to have uh, twelve or fourteen kids, different kids playing every week. Which, when you have twenty four kids in your roster, you got to get them some time out. There'll be some that won't be ready to play. Yeah. But uh, you know, they they get to play here. But I, I think it'll be good for our just for our program for those kids to go. Most of the tournaments are around Detroit Lakes, but they'll get to see. Are they going to make the South Dakota swing with you? Uh, they will not. No. 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 Okay. It's just varsity. Okay. No. But I, they've got, um, you know, there are two, two tournaments every week all the way through. So mm -hmm. that, that, that's how we build our program. And yep. he's really done a nice job with that, getting them to play and okay. working with the varsity boys too on, on some things. But um, his, his work with the JV is really crucial for. Yeah, it builds what the program. Absolutely yep. builds the program. And we need them. I mean, we, 24 kids, I, I wouldn't be able to, they wouldn't yeah. get anything done because right. I wouldn't be able to help them out. You couldn't so. watch them all. Yep. Yep. Well, uh, unless there's something you can do to help Watson's game, I don't know what uh, what we you know, could do there. But and now, are, are you going to tell the story that something. you told about, <laughs> about you know, hey, Aiden, hold my, hold my clipboard. <laughs> Are you going to tell that story? Oh, when I shanked the one in the water? Yeah. Or <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling that story. Okay. All right. All right. So, you so, know, what, what happens, though, is you get to where you get to a certain age and you plateau. Oh, so he's. And okay. I think. Is I, that what it is? That could be what it is. You think so? No. I'm way over that plateau then. I, I must know. have fell or off the edge. If he maybe pick me up, I could go play with him and give him some pointers. The, the problem is that I don't get to play as much as you. So. You know, if I had the opportunity to play every day and, you know, <laughs> play some of these nice courses that you get to play that, you know, us, you know, the mere mortals don't get to play, <laughs> you know, maybe, Poor maybe, yeah. maybe I would get better. But, hey, you yeah. know what? I'll I think play. all those times I've been at Fargo Country Club has done nothing go. for my Here game at all. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. I've never been there. I've had lunch there. You should come with. Yeah. Okay. I'm what? sure the... I'm sure the uh, Circle Nations could spare you for one day. You think so? I'll take a sick day if you're gonna if you're gonna let me go. Yep. So. <laughs> Three on the bus. Yeah, there we go. Make me drive the buses. Yeah, day. there you go. So. <laughs> All right, head coach of the Huskies golf squad. Got anything else? No, nope, coach. I'm just we're ready to go. It's gonna be really busy once we get. Yeah, going you got a busy week next week. It'll so be fun. Uh, uh, we will not have a coach's show next week. Uh, Brian's got to do his civic duty next Wednesday night. So, a little uh, busy. You're it's a good. little busy. Yeah. So need a producer. Sorry. Well, yeah, you know what? Let's get that uh, community center built up. Hey, that's what we're working on. So we're trying. That might be to... another show. Well, that could be a show. That's, I'll, I'll yeah. stir that pot right now. Yeah, okay. here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's head coach of the Huskies Boys Golf Squad, Jeff Ralph. And uh, standing on deck there, we've got Amanda Lunsetter, uh, girls tennis coach for the Huskies. Coming up next, right here on Three Borders Sports Network.
confident. We make sure that when you need a vehicle, we'll find the perfect one that matches your lifestyle and budget. Like the eye-catching Chevy Equinox, the powerful, always dependable Chevy Silverado, or the rugged, hard-working GMC Sierra. Since 1960, Smith Motors has provided an excellent automotive buying experience. From low-pressure sales to high-quality service, our customers always come first. Find your new Chevrolet or GMC today at Smith Motors. Small town friendly, big town deals. Advantage is proud to support our local Twin Town teams. They'd like to remind farmers that the Yield Advantage team is ready to help you get the W next planting season. They can help get your equipment in game shape with upgrades large and small. Yield Advantage is your local precision planting premier dealer. From row cleaners to closing wheels, seed meters to liquid fertilizer systems and everything in between. If you want to give yourself a competitive edge next season, contact Yield Advantage today. A local insurance team ready to serve you. American Family Insurance, Miller & Associates. Providing home, auto, life, farm, and business insurance. As residents of your community, they understand how important it is to be there for you, their trusted friends and neighbors. Together, they're building strong partnerships that help everyone succeed. American Family Insurance, Miller & Associates. A proud supporter of high school athletics. And we hope to see you at American Family Insurance, Miller Associates. Since 1941, Minn Kota Ag Products has been helping farmers with their agricultural needs. The farming industry has expanded at great lengths, and Minn Kota Ag Products is there to provide farmers with their entire chemical, fertilizer, seed, and grain elevator needs. They also offer deep band tillage, chemical application, and fertilizer application, just to name a few. For market access at your fingertips, and information essential to your farm operation, download the Minn Kota Egg Products app. Minn Kota Egg Products, proud to be a partner in your farm operation since 1941. Are we ready now? Right now? Yeah, I'll do that. That looks that? good. Is that okay? You look so official when you do well, that. Well, not really. Did but... you have your cell phone camera at that yeah, time? Yeah, we're, we're all on camera. Oh, so oh, look at him go. Let me turn the music down. Little professional. I do love the setup. So I do. Thank you. She hasn't been here in a while. No, she hasn't. That's a sleek setup, this, this and I really love what you guys do with this back wall. It looks so, very thank nice. Thank you. Thank you. It uh, don't look to see how straight it is. But we it's, we know all the it's, imperfections <laughs> in that wall. I think it looks. But it looks so nice for Very nice and um, thank yeah. you. That kind of made me laugh when I walked in. <laughs> I was like, I'm okay. Have a well, little coach's party say in what, here. We won't say what that we is, but just hey. Just keep We're it high school. relaxed. It's a man space here. That's it's right. a man or, space. Or a woman space. A woman yeah. space. Yeah. yeah. There we go. How about I that? I can throw. I and, can throw down. And eventually we're going to get a big screen TV in here too. Yep. Yeah, so. That would be what, that'd be nice. Might yeah. even be able to watch the show with Then here. I can who, make who sure I, I look good on camera because now I just have to trust Watson and I, I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe at some point we Put might, a filter on. I can make we, we me look Put young. a filter on. Maybe we'll get some makeup going. I mean, uh, I don't know. We <laughs> could do that. There's, there's a lot of stuff that we could do, so yep. we'll, we'll see what happens. Brush so. it up. I need to look younger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. And skin here, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could all use that. Uh, Wobbin Girls Tennis head coach Amanda Lunsetter here. Thanks for joining everybody and welcome to the Three Border Sports Network Giants Coaches Show brought to you by and presented by Red River Communications and Cable Channel 28. Amanda Lunsetter joining us here for the first time this spring. Our first coaches show this spring. Your first time in here obviously as we're uh, talking about the new surroundings that we have, but uh, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. It looks good in here. I love I, the I love the decor. I really thank do. You. Thank you. Yeah, we're uh, we're planning on doing something here this summer, maybe have a little open house or something. That too. would be so awesome. We'll, we'll see what's going to happen there, but more to come on that. All right, uh, Amanda, you haven't had a, a, a match yet either, have you? Nope. We're just at the beginning of our season uh, first week, I believe, on court, and then 
or sorry, maybe this is my second week already. I don't know. Time's flying really yeah. fast here for yeah. us. But we're on court. We have been in the gym. It's been cold. It's been raining. But oh. it's not snowing. So there hasn't been any shoveling this year, which I think I is awesome. I was just going to say, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot different, as we just talked with Coach Ralph a minute ago. And, and uh, Andrew Lunsetter just walked in, too. Same thing for the boys. Um, but it's a different year this year. So you're able to get out there on the court a little sooner than what you did last year. Yep, yep. We're... We're out there, which is How many the outdoor practices biggest you deal. Um, I th with exception of Monday, we've been out every single day this week. And next, last week, we were out. Um, were we out? I have to think about this. We might have been inside because it was too cold. It might have been chilly. Yeah. It might have been too chilly. But yeah. we are at least out there. I believe last year, our first time seeing a court was our first match. Wow. So this is a huge improvement. And with the weekend looking so nice moving forward, I told the ladies, you have no excuse. You need to be out on the court. So yep. um, we have our nets up, which is awesome. We didn't have to shovel. We're going to get our screens up here quickly. And I think we're, we're off to a, at least a decent start as far as court, courts are concerned. So. Court time is, is important, especially when we really don't have an indoor court here in town. Right, right. So it's important for you to be able to get outside and get that those reps in and everything with, with the players. Um, talk about, uh, well, before we get on to the team a little bit, Coach, let's talk about uh, your first match is going to be, I believe, Tuesday against Cheyenne? Yep, that's correct. And you'll be up there? We'll be up there against them. Um, you know, there's some potential for rain, and frankly, I hope it does. I It sounds weird saying just after what we just discussed, but... Right now, we're kind of in a situation. We had 12 girls come out, and um, my, like three of my seniors have been gone because they have been excelling in other things. So I had, um, I had one out doing one act and did really, really well with, with that. Actually, I had two out with one act. And then I have a couple of kids who are in speech, and they're in competitive oh, sure. speech as well. And so they've been out for that. And... I love it. I love that my girls are involved. They're very academically inclined. They're involved in other activities, and they excel at those activities. Sure. But it does kind of overlap a little bit, and so we have missed a couple of practices, which has become quite a big problem since we're such a small team. There's no one to kind of substitute for them. And so I'm sweating a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, Cheyenne's a very tough team, yep. and so I wouldn't be sad if it rained. I'm not going to lie. But, I mean, either way, I feel that... I, I've definitely been uh, putting them in, in through the paces. We've been doing some gym practices, so those are always opportunities for them to get their conditioning and their strength in. Um, but kind of mentally preparing the girls, like this is a, this is going to be a tough season. Um, we lost some big leaders last year. Mm -hmm. uh, they graduated, and so it, it will definitely be a rebuilding season. But I, they're definitely capable, and. Um, it, it's just with the mindset as we go in, we're young and we need to put in the work now because there won't be any room for error. Right. So, all right, let's talk about the roster a little bit. Uh, have you got any seniors? And if, if so, who are they? In? I have Julia Seibel, Gina Kwame, and Carmen Burvey from Fairmount. Okay. Um, so those are my, that's my senior lineup. And um, like I said, very involved in in speech, in drama, in in their activities, so mm -hmm. I'm I'm pretty proud of what they're doing off court. I'm I haven't quite gotten a full glimpse of what they can do on court yet mm -hmm. because they have been involved and um, they're doing their best to get themselves caught up. Carmen's been on, I believe, a senior trip, so she's j she'll be getting back and okay. kind of having getting thrown into things. But they're seniors. Yeah, it's not their first go around, yeah. so I expect them to pick That's it up true. quickly. Um, currently. And without surprise, our number one is is Brenna Erdman. She mm -hmm. is a freshman. Um, she was she was Liz Cummings, our number one from last year, yep. um, her doubles partner, and she definitely shows a, a lot of promise. She's been working very hard. Okay. Yep, she's been working very hard in the off season. She's done a very good job at. Um, being a leader and, and making and throwing the call outs to get people to come hit during the off season, mm -hmm. and she's definitely put in her time. So she's she's standing out and she's she's help, um, she's supporting those seniors, those upperclassmen in in leadership, and um, she's done a good job for a young person as captain so far. 
Um, another standout is Breland Lucina. She's my junior, and she's a returning, coming from a returning tennis family and also just a, a returning varsity player. Yeah. And she's shown her leadership as well out there on the court, has done a good job at making sure the team's getting together and doing stuff, some team bonding stuff, which I really appreciate and like. So I think we have a good group here um, as far as my upperclassmen and my varsity go. It's just a matter of how are we setting our goals. Mm -hmm. We need to have realistic goals because really shortly following them, we have brand new players, which yeah. I'm grateful for. We have new players coming out. Um, our team is smaller this year with only 12, but we do have some youngins that have come out. Um, so we've been watching them. Um, I have a foreign exchange student. Her name's oh, Jada. Okay. She has really picked up the sport quickly. Okay. I, I'm starting Didn't to get... did you have one last year? Too? Yes, I, I had one so. in the fall. I and so. I'm starting to get accused from the coaches from other <laughs> from other teams that I'm recruiting <laughs> from, from different countries. And man, if I had that budget, I guess I would. But, <laughs> yeah. um, so it's nice that she's come out and is trying out tennis. And cool. yeah, same with my middle schoolers. I've even... I've had my daughter out there. She's a sixth grader, so she, obviously she won't be competing, but right. I've had her out there just to be like, I need you to be, be on deck, be ready for yep. what's coming forward. So. Yep. But a great group of girls, good girls. And um, what I'm looking to see is that once everyone's schedule settled down, we get a little bit more locked in and commit to what we're doing moving forward. Okay, so then uh, next Thursday after that, then I think you got your first home match. Yep. And that is against Davies, I believe. <laughs> yeah. We have back-to-back -back hard teams. Back-to-back. <laughs> -back. Yeah. Well, the EDC isn't easy in the tennis no. side. No, on the tennis side, it's never, it's always going to be just a little bit challenging for us. Yeah. Uh, we're competing against much larger schools, and sure. they do show up for tennis. They yeah. really do. Um, but, you know, I think we've proven ourselves time again, and we repeatedly are surprising the other teams with the type of athletes that we're producing. We really are the underdog with mm -hmm. not having the same facilities, not having yep. the same numbers, um, just not having the same opportunities. And still we are producing exceptional tennis players. Um, in the fall, we, were, we, we had our two boys get to state, which was fantastic. Was that, and yeah. I, I definitely do see the potential in our team. But <clears> I, <throat> I wanna, you know, I told my seniors and my upperclassmen, like set the precedent, let these young kids know what they have to build themselves toward because it just, it doesn't appear it's not yeah. just talent based you gotta work and part of that is commitment you gotta yeah. commit and yep. say here are my goals I'm going to set them and I'm going to achieve them so so you are in year number six? I believe I'm in year 12 12 of I'm my coaching off. of both boys and girls <clears throat> I'm way off. Well, congratulations. I know it doesn't that. look it. <laughs> I know it doesn't look it, but yeah, I'm actually to my 12th year of coaching both guys and girls now. Good for you. So now where I was going with that is that you've been doing the park and rec stuff. So you're seeing some of these kids that you helped in park and rec yep. starting to come up now through the ranks. Yes. Yep. I've from for a while now, but it, it always fluctuates a little bit and sometimes it's always a, uh, a, uh, do I go with this sport or this sport? Yeah. So that's always tough. But like, yep, I definitely see my Parks and um, I actually have one just joined this year from Parks and Rec, which okay. is pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, my biggest thing is like our, our Parks and Rec program is growing. I expect to see more here in the future. I really am looking forward to seeing what we have come out in the next yeah. coming years because the last two years for Parks and Rec, our numbers had tripled. So hopefully... We'll start to see that a little bit more often. Um, it's just, it's really hard for a lot of uh, young people when they're starting the sport at seventh grade. Yeah. It's a little intimidating where some of these other sports, they start a little bit earlier and it's promoted a little bit earlier. So before we let you go, have you got any assistant coaches with you or any graduate assistants? Speaking of a star lineup, okay, cool. let's talk about this. All right, let's go there. The real star lineup here. We have Coach Frame, yep. who I believe... He's in his 27th year or 28th year. He's Great up work. there now of his coaching career, tennis mm -hmm. coaching career, which is mm -hmm. pretty impressive. Yep. And a vol volunteer coaching, uh, returning from the fall coaching season, Liz Cummings comes back. Oh, okay. She's going to use her wisdom and knowledge from her experience playing, and she has volunteered her hours to come out and help us out That's and get cool. everyone ready and going. And she's she's got the legs and body still. She's still uh, an impressive athlete. So she's helped put some of those older girls 
through their paces and make Good. sure that they're sharp. So I like that very much. It's it's dual action. She can go out there and actually hit with them and push them a little bit where I, I no longer can get to the I ball. I was just going to say, it takes the pressure <laughs> a off. A little harder for me than <laughs> now. So yeah, yeah. So it's pretty it's pretty fantastic working with crew. Um, I have Zach Cummings, who's a varsity player from the boys' season. He's coming out as our manager and helping us also oh, sure. be a hitting partner as well yep. and, and feeding balls. And I think the girls ha have the tools in front of them. We just need to make sure that we, we're going in with right we're going with the right mindset that we we don't get our we are not intimidated by the teams that we're playing. We're attacking it and we're looking at it straight yeah. on. Don't care about what the shirt says. Just exactly. Go play. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. All right, coach. You got anything else you're going to add there? We'll nope, let you go. we we welcome you all to out to the courts. If it's a nice sunny yep. day, come check Next out Thursday. our ladies. They work hard, and we we love the support. We'd love to see you out. Absolutely. All right, that's Amanda Lunsetter, head coach of the Huskies girls tennis team. And then coming up next, we got Andrew Lunsetter, uh, Huskies baseball coach. Coming up next, right here on Three Borders Sports Network. Two years of experience, Dr. Andrea at Hornstein Family Chiropractic is certified in pediatrics and pregnancy, seeing children of all ages daily. Start your pregnancy outright with a correcting postural adjustment to help with daily activities and also give you a better night's sleep. Continued chiropractic care throughout your pregnancy can potentially help for an easier labor and delivery of your new little one. Call Hornstein Family Chiropractic today at 701-672-1300 for an appointment or request an appointment online at hornsteinfamilychiropractic.com. Dr. Andrea Hornstein, helping your family grow up healthy. Insurance is an important safety net for your family, your home, and your business. Carlson Family Insurance Agency is your local auto owner's insurance provider. At Carlson Family Insurance, they work for their clients, not the companies. Customer service and satisfaction is their number one goal. Give Carlson Family Insurance a call for all of your personal, farm, business, and crop insurance needs. 701-672-6002 or at cfiagency.com. Carlson Family Insurance, your auto owner's insurance agent. Powerful and playful. Delicate. And precise, bold, and carefree. It's the way you move, and it moves us. To deliver care for your whole family, to provide options beyond the expected, to help you leave pain in the past and find your way forward. Orthopedics and sports medicine at Sanford Health. Health lives here. I'm Katie with First Community Credit Union, and we're here with Dakota Dirt Coffee. We chose First Community Credit Union because first and foremost, they're right in our community of Milner, North Dakota. And the convenience of that and being able to know the people that we're dealing with, that's something that we can't get anywhere else. I would say FCCU could be best described as a full service financial institution that's offered and available in a local community. All right, you can go now. All right, thank you. Yeah, that was a good five. I know. You want. Yeah, I'm not on camera now, so it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's all I, gotta, I have to remember to turn the music down. I start. I got stuff to do over here. Yeah, I know you're so busy. Yeah, I don't know what your solitaire game is like, but it's more than that. Welcome sure. back, everybody, to the Giants Coaches Show here, presented by Red River Communications and Red River Communications Cable Channel 28, in our first spring season coaches show. And uh, right now we're joined by head coach of the Huskies baseball squad, Andrew Lunsetter. Andrew, thanks for coming. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you coming in and uh, spending some time with us this evening. Uh, before we get started, I want to congratulate you. We didn't get to have our final uh, spring season show last year uh, after you had that nice run and uh, coach of the year and the whole yeah. thing. So the boys yeah. finished third in the state. And yeah. congratulations on that good season. Yeah, thank you so yeah, much. We had first... Uh, um, EDC tournament championship for Wapton High yeah, School Yeah, EDC baseball. champions, yeah. yeah. First time. Um, highest state finish for us, too, third yeah. place. Um, that was just a phenomenal group of kids. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, not only great baseball players, but uh, just a great, great people. And we had a lot of fun last yep. year in yep. that season. So. It's a good year. Yeah, yeah. They deserved it. Yep. All right. Uh, let's get started now. Again, you had a great year last year, Andrew. And, uh, 
Uh, again, just like uh, Coach Ralph and Coach Lunsetter just before you here, uh, you're getting outside a little bit earlier than you did last year compared to last year. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. Um, I heard you and Jack talking in the back there about uh, how much time you've actually yeah, been we, out. So we, it was the crazy part is, is, I mean, we were outside a couple of weeks before the official start of the season. We were outside playing catch and getting some ground balls and fly balls and doing stuff. And then, you know, boom, you know, it's, you know, it's spring baseball. You know, it's the first day of spring baseball for us because all of a sudden it's 30 degrees yeah, and it gets, it's snowing and we get snarky. all that stuff. Yeah. So we still, we, we still ended up with it with a couple weeks indoors, but um, we got outside again all, all week last week. We got outside. We just didn't have as much surface time on that on JR as we would like because it wasn't really ready yet. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't want to muck that up or anything. So we were kind of just doing stuff on the football field, but outside is still better than inside when you're yep. trying to do baseball stuff. We could still use the batting cage and do all that. And so. you can still use fly balls. Yeah, and hit fly yeah, balls we, still, we can still get some fly balls and stuff on the football field. We have, we've had a lot more outside time than we have the last few years. So um, we were outside for, you know, we had six, seven practices outside instead of, you know, one practice in play. So that part's been, was really nice. How many years have you been coaching? The baseball, uh, baseball? this yep. is my seventh year. The seventh year yep. of, of that. Yep. And let, before we get into what happened yesterday with the team, uh, assistant coaches for you this year? Assistant coaches this year. So I still have Hunter McCall back. Yep. Um, and then we have Ryan Brandt as our JV coach. Okay. And then uh, this year, Brett Gilbertson is helping us out as a, as a volunteer coach. So okay. um, he's working at the school this year, and he's helping us out. Um, the 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 man the myth the legend will you like retired at he the did end of finally last retire season. Yeah. Um, so we were looking for you know we were looking for somebody to kind of fill that void which um, experience wise we we can't we couldn't do but um, Brett's been a great addition he's he's got a, he's got such a fantastic attitude yeah does it I mean he's willing to help out in any way that he can and I just really love having a third coach. Um, in the dugout on game day, you know, it's nice when Hunter and I are on the field. We still got a, a guy in the dugout to relay information and yep. and kind of keep the make sure the kids are staying focused and all that. That's so, important. Yeah, yeah. That's so that, it's worked out really well. We appreciate having Brett. And Ryan week. spends a lot of time with the JV guys, so he doesn't yep. have to spend as much time with the varsity. Guys. Right. He's, now you practice together though, don't you? No, no. So we no. All, we all, we practice at JR every day after school. They practice at, out at the airport. Oh, they go out which there, is okay. great. I mean, that works out perfectly. That's where they're going to play their games yep. anyway. Um, so we, we're both we're both playing where we're going to play the games, and okay. um, he takes those guys out there and, and does a great job with those. He's got his hands full. He's got he's got 18 on his list right now mm. this year. Um, and and he he does a great job too with those guys. How many and you got in the varsity roster? We're carrying sixteen. We got sixteen. Yeah, right now we got sixteen. So, um, pretty good numbers. That is. We've had pretty, pretty good numbers for yeah. the last few years. It's, so uh, that surprised me for the eighteen on yeah. the junior varsity. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't realize that. Um, we 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 pulled up. I, I don't want to say pulled up. We asked a few eighth graders to come and play with us this year too. Um, you know, kind of probed to see if there would be any interest from from. Uh, some eighth graders this year, mm -hmm. and I had four kids that um, said they would like to play. So we asked those guys to come up too. Um, just to, we, we wanted to be around that. Um, we've been around that 32 to 35 number the last few years, and that seems to be a perfect fit for us. Because okay. you know, you end up with, you know, you end up with some kids unavailable at times for yeah. one reason or another, and um, you know, it's it's. It's a different sport where you know you got if we if we play six games in a week we got to have more available arms and yep. things like that so yep. uh, it's 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 we don't want to be sitting at you know just twelve or thirteen guys we'd rather have a few more than that so yep that makes sense yeah. all right so uh, yesterday you had your first game even yep up in yep. Valley City yeah how did that go for you I, you know it was, it, was a, it, was, it was a beautiful day yeah um, it was the con the conditions were great the, their field looked really nice they got a really nice ball field out yeah, there. They do. Um, and it, we actually, you know, expectations, not really, we weren't really sure yet what to expect, um, with this group. Mm -hmm. We have, um, we're not young, but we're inexperienced. Yeah, um, you were senior heavy last yeah, year. And, and we are still this year. Okay. It's just, you know, that, that was such a, such a phenomenal group. That we had before, a lot of those guys, you know, had played for three years. Um, so we've we got um, we have a lot of seniors this year. Um, ten seniors this year, I think Isn't it's that? ten. Let me wow. 
think about that for a second. I got three, so it must, might be 11 seniors, actually. Hmm. Um, and so we we are older, but we're inexperienced. Just gotcha. not a lot yeah. of not a lot of varsity innings. Yeah, there you go. So, um, you know, we started Cooper Klosterman on the mound. Felt really good about having it, him out there. Um, we're without Miles Hinckley, who I think will probably be our starting center fielder next week. Sure. Um, we didn't have him yesterday. We won't have him on Friday. Okay. So instead of starting Jaden last night, we started Cooper. Um, that just solidified our outfield a little bit, and Cooper threw a great game. I mean, he had only given up one hit going into the fifth inning. Mm. Um, he'd struck out eight batters. He really, he really threw a nice game. And we started out fantastic. We had our first two guys of the game um, reached base. Skyler Blado had a great approach at the plate all night. He was seeing pitches and getting on base, which is what we're looking for out of a leadoff hitter. Yep. Um, Braden Steffens in his first varsity time. Um, Braden's just a great athlete. Yep. I mean, he's a great football player. He's a great yep. basketball player. He shows up, um, and he has to work a little bit harder, I think, at this sport. It, it doesn't, I wouldn't say comes quite as naturally to him, but he's, he's, he's picking up those things really quickly. And, um, and he, he, uh, he was getting on base last night too. Anyway, we put our first two guys on and Jaden smacks a triple right away to start the season. So we're up two to nothing with a runner on third and no outs to start the game. And you wow. can't really ask for a better start than that. Yeah. And then we just had a trouble, we had a little trouble closing out um, some innings defensively and we had a little bit of trouble cashing in on some um, offensive opportunities the rest was, of the way. I was gonna ask you how you did defensively too. Yeah. I, I did see the final score, uh, eight to two I think it was. Yep, yep. Um, but I didn't see any other box score other than that, so I was just kind of curious defensively how were how did they uh, how did the boys do? So again, I mean, we we looked like we were we had some limited surface time. We um, we we made a couple of physical mistakes. We made a couple of mental mistakes, and you know how it is. Again, yeah. with just a little bit of inexperience, then when you get out there and the and you start the game, everything speeds up just a little bit. Um, and that's one of the things that we talk about all the time. Like if we're not playing, if we're not practicing um, at the speed that the game's going to be, mm -hmm. um, then we're really doing ourselves a disservice because then all of a sudden you get out there um, and something happens and you start moving and you didn't practice that. You didn't practice that. You didn't take those reps in practice with the same kind of speed and intensity. Yeah. And when you try to do that in a game, you panic a little bit. And they let that fear set in, and you, and you have some mistakes. And we had a little bit of that last night. Okay. Um, and so, you know, those yep. things happen. Yep. All right, so what do we got up next for the Huskies? So we're playing at home here now, home opener on Friday. We'll have that on Three Border Sports. Yep, Friday against, uh, we're hosting West Fargo Horace. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me, another, another team we can compete with. We competed really well last night. We just had some mistakes, some miscues, and we didn't finish on some of our opportunities, but okay. we competed. I think we'll compete again on Friday. Um, Jaden's gonna throw on Friday. Okay. And I mean, you guys have seen him before. He's He gives us the chance to win against anybody. So we're gonna play some really good teams this year. Um, but if we feel like if we got Jaden up there, we got a, we got a shot against yeah. everybody, so. And then you've got Braxton <coughs> Polly as well on the hill that, that'll come back. Yeah, so Braxton's actually got a little bit of a, he's got a little bit of an injury going uh -oh. right now. He's, um, his, his arm's bugging him a little bit, so he hasn't that. been throwing too much. We were, we were lucky to have him um, to play first base last night. We were afraid he might not even be able to play at oh, all. Wow. He hadn't, didn't, really didn't take any swings on, or do any throwing last week, um, and then came in and was able to go for us last night. Okay. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, and battled through an injury, but um, so we don't know when we're gonna get him oh. back to throw some games. So he's, we got Jane going. Um, but Cooper did a great job. Sure. Skyler can throw. Sure, Skyler can um, throw too. Um, Aiden Hayek is a sophomore for us this year that we that we pulled up, and he's looked really good so far. He threw the last inning last night and did a nice job. Okay. Um, we got lots of arms. The Momi boys both can throw. Jacob Fenske. Um, we got a lot of pitchers. We okay. got 16 guys. I think about 10 of them pitch. Eli Kappas. So we're not short of arms or anything like that. Um, but but Braxton is a guy that we're going to lean on yep. and we expect to throw like he threw a few quite a few innings for us last year yep. um of course we had those top three pitchers who were fantastic and were you know all aces for a lot of teams they would yep. be um yep. 
But Braxton got all the rest of those innings, basically, yep. when those guys weren't throwing and, and did a great job. Well, so sad. we're really hoping we can get him back sooner than later. I just saw his dad on Monday night, and I didn't uh, I didn't ask him how Braxton was yep. doing. But, uh, yeah, so I mean, right after Jaden, you know, we're we're looking at Braxton to sure. be that, that yep. next guy. Yep. Um, but Cooper did a great job filling that role last night. Yep. Um, so that's that's big for us, too, going forward, to have that third guy, I think. Because so. yep, we're going to lean on Skyler a lot um, as a starting shortstop. I don't like to um, pitch that guy too much if I can help because yeah. got to fill that spot. Defensively at another spot. Yep. 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 I hear you. All right, Coach, I'm going to let you go. You got anything else there? You know, I just, I just really think um, we're in a position, I told the boys, you know, that wasn't the result that we were looking for last night. Um, but we did, we did do some really good things. And, and I think as the season goes on and that inexperience turns into experience. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm just hoping we can get that done. It's such a short season. I'm hoping we can get that done um, early enough where we can really have a chance to surprise some people down down the stretch. So, and I think we're going to get there. I yep. really do. This, it's, a fan, it's a really great group of kids. We've had a lot of fun so far. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, and, and they're coming with the right attitude every day. So awesome. um, we're going to work hard. That's awesome. All right, Wapiton baseball coach, head coach, Andrew Lunsetter, uh, will have their game on Friday afternoon, 5 o'clock first pitch. 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock first pitch. We'll have that here right here on Three Borders Sports Network on Friday afternoon from John Randall Field. Uh, Andrew, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate All right. it. All right, coach. Uh, we'll be right back with head coach of the Cowboys baseball squad, and that's Jack Heideman coming up next right here on Three Borders Sports Network. Interstate Engineering, our business is about connections. We connect people to water, communities to counties, and counties to the rest of the world. Our work connects main streets to interstates, and yesterday with the potential of tomorrow. With over 40 years of connecting, our experience and expertise are thanks to the clients we have earned, the trust we have built, and the connections we have made. Interstate Engineering, the professionals you need, the people you trust. Getting you back to what you love. We are Optimum Rehab. For over a decade, Dr. Tony Egeman has provided physical therapy services for the people of Wapaton, Breckenridge, and surrounding communities. We're a small practice that sees our patients as individuals. Through hands-on techniques, our patients have their treatment plans tailored to their exact needs. Sprains, sore muscles, back pain, achy joints, rehab following surgery, you name it. Optimum Rehab is your answer. When you need exceptional physical therapy, you need Optimum Rehab. Comdell Innovation is now hiring production technicians for a variety of shifts with opportunities to make $20 or more per hour. Work in a clean, climate-controlled facility. Second shift, four 10-hour days, every weekend off, 3.30 p.m. to 2 a.m., and four crew rotation, straight days, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., or straight nights, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Apply in person or online at ComdellInnovation.com. Comdell Innovation of Wapiton, an employee-owned company. Since 1987, Red River Valley and Western Railroad has served North Dakota and Minnesota with over 500 miles of track. Red River Valley and Western handles shipping, freight car repair, storage options, and now transload services. With over 30 years of experience in the railroad industry, they know dependable service is what you strive for. Red River Valley and Western is proud to be a part of the community since 1987. Founded in 1972, Mindac Farmers Cooperative is owned by nearly 500 sugar beet growers and has a rich history of sweetening life in the Red River Valley. Join Mindac's team today. In addition to an excellent pay and benefits package, they are currently offering a $2,000 sign-on bonus for all full-time positions, which includes sugar loader, packager helper, extra gang, and yard person helper. Entry level starting at $19.78 per hour, plus a $3 per hour shift differential. Apply online at mdf.coop slash careers or contact Zane 701-671-7777. No matter. 
fridge. Let's see if I remember to turn the music down here. So. Okay, we're on. Well, if I'm, if I'm talking, that, well, that you means you were just that, talking to me a minute ago. That means that we're. I was talking to you. Now I'm. I'm talking. So. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's. Uh, we'll we'll figure it out as as we go along. Okay. Here, so we'll, right. we'll we'll figure it out. Okay. All right. Well, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> After all that. Uh, welcome back, everybody, to the Giants Culture Show presented by Red River Communications and Red River Communications Cable Channel 28, our own dedicated cable channel, uh, just to Three Borders Sports events when we go live. And speaking of going live, we'll be going live tomorrow as well as the uh, Cowboys baseball squad hosts Pelican Rapids, but we'll talk about that more in a little bit here as I'm now joined by head coach of the Cowboys. That's Jack Heideman. Thanks for having me. Jack, you're number two. Yep, second year here. Yep, and so uh, how does the squad look this year compared to, we'll, we'll talk about the game that you just had, but how's the squad looking for, uh, for the upcoming year? Um, it's good. I'm pretty optimistic about the group of guys. A um, little bit similar to last year in that we're young. We got no seniors, so we're zero seniors, a couple juniors playing zero for us. Seniors. Yeah, not one, not one on the roster, not one in the program. So, and it's been that way since they were just this class or whatever, just never really had many. Okay. Ball players. Okay. Um, yeah, last year no juniors, so um, we're young in that regard for sure. Uh, luckily, some of our young guys, even if they're sophomores, I mean they have they played they last year, right? so they got experience. some experience, yep. you know, which is at least is good for those guys. And they're definitely already like, you know, a step up from where they were last year at this time, just from having a little bit of experience of playing mm -hmm. varsity baseball last year. Um, but again, we got a handful of sophomores and even some freshmen again playing this year, so. Um, we're young, so we're going to have to uh, take some, I guess, learn from experience a little bit. Um, but it's a really good group of guys. I mean, they're working really hard. They're a lot of fun to be around. And so practice so far has been going really good. And they seem to be picking things up pretty quick when we're going over stuff. You know, mainly the mental side of things, yeah. right? There's yeah. always the physical stuff to work on for sure. And there's things to do with our swings and pitching mechanics we got to work on and our, all of our infield work. Um, but the mental side of the game where we're going over all of our pickoffs and bunt plays and first and thirds and all kind of that stuff, like strategic stuff, um, they seem to be picking up on it pretty good. So from good. that point of view, even though we're young, I'm, I'm at least impressed or at least happy where we're at for now. When did practice start for you? Yep. So we started, okay, we had so our right. MSHSL, we just get a week to throw. We can just throw in condition, and so that was March 11th. And so then that next week, whenever that was, the, the 18th, okay. we kicked off practice. And we were outside for throwing week. How that was nice. See? But then the 18th, the next week, where we yeah. could actually start practice, yeah. it got cold on us, so we had to get back inside, and then we had some snow or whatever. We had, you know, some... Some weather come yeah, we in, went backwards so for a while. Back there. inside, so it was like, yeah, kind of like Andrew was talking about. You know, we got outside early. Kids were asking to borrow baseballs to be hit and stuff like that. So, a lot of optimism, and then we got stuck back inside. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I guess that's every year you got to spend some time inside, right? So, yeah, that's, that's, that's just how it goes around here. It always happened, but at least this year it's a little bit sooner. You're playing games a little bit sooner, and I think you did last year too as well. Yeah, so for sure, it makes a difference. Yeah, this first game, this April fourth, we played. We've all we have it on, always have it on the schedule, first week of April. I don't think we've yep. ever hardly ever played that game. So it's great to get the first one in. It's been rare lately, hasn't it, for uh, getting out in early April. So, all right, so let's take a look here, Coach, at that first game. Uh, you took on West Central. They came to town. Yep. And uh, you had a home game. You opened it up the season. It was just one game, correct? Yep, just one so, game. And it was a nice victory for you. Uh, from what I hear and what I saw, it was a quick jump there. You guys got out quick in a hurry. So your offensive uh, side of the ball, you come out. Uh, with some live bats. Yeah, it, I mean, really, the game went really well for us. So we had Trey pitching, um, and Trey he Volkebacher, threw a lot yeah. for us last year, Trey Volkebacher, yep. And it ended up being only a five-inning game. We 10 run them at 12-0 after five. Mm -hmm. um, he pitched great, our offense. We got off to seven runs in the first inning. And so, yeah, I think it was Gavin Hoffert led off for us with a single. Gabe walked. Trey was down 0-2 in the count, but worked a, a walk to have bases loaded. Mm. And then Cooper Roberts, first pitch triple. Three runs right away. He's on third base. Another base hit. So we were up 4-0 by the time the inning was done. Yeah, we put we put seven runs on him. So that was not the start I was expecting, but I was super thrilled with it. So I can't complain about that. And then Trey just mowed everybody down at that point. He so pitched all five? He threw all five innings. Yep, he had 12 strikeouts. So that was... Zero walks too, which the strikeouts are great, of course. If yeah. you can do that, that's awesome. But the zero walks is what I was super happy with. Because Absolutely. He, yeah, and I don't even... Know if he got into hardly any three ball counts. I don't think a runner 
got to second base, so he took care of business. That was great. That is good uh, to hear that. And, and again, from a non-senior squad, from a, a, a squad with zero seniors is what I should say, uh, they put the foot to the or put the gas to the floor and and just kept the throttle down and and hammered away, huh? They really did. Yep, we we uh, scored runs every inning, but the third they had switched pitchers and I think we were up eight zero, yeah, after three and it was like they had a new pitcher in and the inning before we didn't actually have that great of at bats and so kind of the message before we head out for the bottom of the fourth was like, hey, let's put some good at bats together. Like the game's not over. Okay, I mean, yeah, we're off to a nice lead here, but we got to keep going. And then they did. They all came out and they started swinging again. Riley Kappas, another freshman playing for us, picked up a, picked up a hit. Connor Ernst, another freshman, picked up a hit that mm -hmm. inning. So then the bats kind of came alive once more, and we got basically contributions out of everybody in the order, one through nine. Talk about the defensive side of the ball, how the boys do defensively. Then. They did good. I mean, it's a little bit misleading because somebody's like, yeah, you only had one error. It's like we did, but there was only four opportunities. We made, yeah. we made three. We made one error. Trey struck everybody else out. So... Um, That's pretty good. It, yeah, I mean, the plays we made were, were great. Cooper made a really nice play up the middle in the first inning. Um, Gavin Hofford had a couple plays at short, and then that was about it. Yeah, everything else was a strikeout. It was a, was a Connor okay. Ernst put out back behind the plate there. So um, there's definitely, like, I'm interested to see how that's going to look because we do have a lot of young infielders. We got a sophomore at third, sophomore at short, sophomore at second base right now. So we got three young infielders. So. Of course, wow. when you play, you know, more of a competitive game and there's a lot of balls put in play, there still might be some questions that need to be answered there. Okay. Um, I like the look of it. Those three guys have been working really hard. The fundamentals seem pretty good, so I'm optimistic. But, yeah, we haven't really been challenged as far as our Did defense. Did you say Connor Ernst was behind the plate for you? Yep. He's, oh, yeah, Connor Ernst, as a freshman, is, is catching for us. Um, and he did a great job. Yeah. I mean, I haven't got to see him a ton in practice. Um, saw him a little bit. and. He kind of stepped up as the guy that looked like he'd be the best behind there. And I know he's caught before and things like this. And See, and just, I haven't seen that. Yeah, and watching him okay. throw down, I mean, I'm like, yeah, he gets rid of it quick. Like, I think he'll be the guy. But mentally, he, I mean, he's pretty sharp back there. So he's young, but he's pretty mature, at least in his demeanor. And so he called pitches pretty much the whole game, and him and Trey seemed to be in sync. And so that was great. Yeah. I mean, I don't, Trey didn't hardly throw very many breaking balls, so we didn't uh, we didn't test him didn't too much. To, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. But he, I mean, he called a really good game, and he's vocal back there. And you know, your catcher is like the quarterback yep, yep, of the infield. Yep, you have to yep. be. And so, in practice and those things, I've been I've been super happy with Connor. And uh, that was one of the spots this year I was a little bit worried about. You know, the catcher's it's probably the most important position in the field, other than your pitcher throwing at the time. Um, but he's done a very good job, kind of handling everything I'm throwing at him so yeah, far. Yeah, if you've got a freshman that can come in and do varsity catching experience and you can build on that young man for three more years after this uh, you got something on your hands for sure they can uh, they can make you look a lot better they can hide some weaknesses <laughs> for sure and then you can just run things that a lot of times you can't if you have trust in a guy like that so yeah. I'm pretty excited about that absolutely okay this is your second year coaching coach uh, we got for assistance this year with you again yep so helping me on the varsity squad is Tom Thielen oh, yeah. back for his second year. he coached JV before but he's his second year with me as well uh, Travis Ekron is doing the JV. He's by himself down there. Okay. And then we got Austin Ramos and Gavin Snyder doing our junior high guys. Sure. Seventh and eighth grade. All right. So there you go. There's the uh, the coaching squad and then also the rest of the squad. And uh, what do you got coming up next? Yep. So we got our doubleheader tomorrow, tomorrow against Pelican, like you talked about. And that's yep. first two conference games. So we split with them last year in two really close games. So I'm expecting two good baseball games. We'll see where we're at. And it's their first game. So. They'll be. Uh, I think you said that when you were walking in to sit down. If I may repeat it, I don't think it was anything top secret. You're going to find out where you're at tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. I mean, West Central. Um, I mean, we put it on them seven runs right away. Yeah. They kind of deflated. Trey threw super well. I mean, literally, he struck most guys out. So yep. we didn't really get a full picture just of where we are. So when I mean, you get in those HOL conference games, um, usually pretty good teams, pretty good baseball. They'll be throwing. It's the end of the week for them as well. So they'll be throwing their best pitchers, sure. um, as will we. So it'll be just more of a, you know, a chance to see what we can do at the plate, in the field, throwing strikes because it's a doubleheader. So we'll get a lot more guys throwing. You, know, you can't throw one pitcher to, to get through games. So... It'll just be a more accurate picture, I guess, of kind of where we sit at the moment. Yep, uh, it, it's going to be fun. It's, I think the weather's supposed to be pretty decent. It should decent be pretty tomorrow. decent, I think, yep. So Hopefully it's uh, we'll not be too out late. there with Three Border Sports. We'll be out there. Brian and I will have that game tomorrow on, uh, on Three Border Sports Network tomorrow on our YouTube channel. And I think we're going to plan on uh, live viewing Cable 28, aren't we? Yep, so we're going to have it on Cable 28, That's awesome. too. So, uh, so we'll be there tomorrow, and uh, wish you well. Yeah, thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Got anything Take else? It. 
Uh, just thanks for coming out and supporting our games. We really appreciate that. It's yeah, good no for everybody problem. to be able to watch those from home too. So we appreciate that. And I think you were part of the uh, the big bash on uh, Saturday night. Yep, April our, 6th, our so you're annual smoker. smoker, and that went pretty well. Again, we, we had a, I mean a ton of support. A lot of people there. A lot of local businesses that. Yeah. Uh, donated and provided things for us that really, because I mean that funds our program from little guys all the way up through Legion. So we we kind of rely on that, especially yeah. for some of the capital improvements we're trying to make to our fields and facilities. So that's so that that does that. affect the high school team a little bit too, because it is also to use for facility improvement. For sure, yeah. yeah. So it's it's a it's on the school property that field is, but we mm -hmm. take care of a lot of it and we put a lot of money into it yep. and time into it that that comes out of the basically the baseball. That whatever they fund, yeah. they're paying for those things as well. So, yeah, um, awesome. yep, that's it's really important for us. And yep. it, so, I really appreciate everybody's uh, time, energy, money that they've put yep. into that. It goes a yep. long ways. It's really. Right. We're gonna talk about who the big winner was. Did you hear who no. won the big gun? This guy over here. Yeah. I, you know, it's I never win anything out there. I, I come there with a loaded wallet, and I always walk <laughs> yeah, out of the exactly. end. So yeah. I, I didn't get the. I was out of town, so. Yeah, he was out. Of, I he, sent him the text. He won the big gun, the, boy, the number one prize. Boy. Yeah. Hey, got to be in it to win it. That's right. That's right. Well, I was play. in it. I was in it twice. <laughs> yeah, you were in it, but you weren't in it to win it. So <laughs> I guess yeah, not. It's, it's okay. All right, Jack Eideman, head coach of the Cowboys baseball squad, will have their game on the air tomorrow against Pelican Rapids. First pitch, 4 o'clock, I believe. 4 o'clock, that's right. So we'll be on the air about 3.45 with our pregame show, and uh, we'll have both games for you on Red River, or on uh, Three Border Sports and Red River Communications. All right, we'll be right back. Uh, we got Jake Dodge, head coach of the BW softball team. He's on deck, and uh, Larry Lash is even in the house. Oh, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll be back. What time of year, a farmer's relationship with Red River Grain Hefty Seed never changes. Red River Grain Hefty Seed works shoulder to shoulder with area farmers to attain the highest possible profit for you. Red River Grain Hefty Seed has been saving farmers money for years. For all your grain and agronomy needs, stop in or call the friendly staff at 643-3738 or visit them online at redrivergrain.com. Here at the Amanda Frederick State Farm Agency, we do our best to make insurance a little less insurancy for you. Hi, this is Amanda, your local State Farm agent. You've probably seen our team out and about volunteering in the community, participating in local events, and just doing our all around best to support and encourage a healthy, vibrant community. Stop into our office sometime and find out why we've been consistently voted best insurance agency in the Valley and why State Farm has been a trusted household name in insurance for 100 years. We hope to meet you soon. At OSPTI, our focus is on each individual's therapy needs, whether it be for speech, occupational, or physical therapy services. I'm Becky, a physical therapist at OSPTI, and I love being able to provide that personal care to each person that we see with clinics in Breckenridge, Hankinson, and Fergus Falls. You don't have to travel very far from home. From infants to athletes to adults, you can request OSPTI to meet your therapy goals. Any bank can tell you they have a rock-solid commitment to agriculture. Bell can prove it. To this day, every Bell Bank branch is partially built with rocks we've picked from our founder's farm. But our roots in ag have grown more than a few offices. They've shaped who we are and formed our entire approach to banking. Let us prove it to you as you grow your farm and prepare your legacy for the next generation. Bell Bank, committed to ag. In Wahpeton, talk to Rick Steckler. Did you, like the, the, did you like that one? I didn't point that I time. I couldn't hear the music. I, I know I said I was going to start the music. Yeah. That means that, okay, now you need to I can act go. like you're going to be on TV or All whatever. Right. Okay. okay. So we'll, we'll get it right. We'll, we'll figure it out. By the so, uh, uh, end of the spring season, we'll have it figured out. Right. All right. Uh, exactly. Welcome back, everybody, to the Giants Coaches Show. And also presented to you by Red River Communications and Red River Communications Cable Channel 28. And I'm Joe Schreiner. And by the way, he's Brian Watson over there on the other side of the... I'm the, the man behind the curtain. The man behind the curtain. So, so pay no attention to me. No, we try not to. <laughs> All right, we're joined now by head coach of the BW softball team. That's Jake Dodge sitting next to us. And uh, uh, welcome aboard, sir, and welcome to our new digs. 
Yeah, thank you. Nice spot you got here. Thank you. We're trying yeah. to trying to make it nice in here and uh, doing the right things. But uh, uh, coach, uh, again, just like all the spring coaches here, you got outside early this year, and we'll talk about your game yesterday that you had. But uh, um, you've been able to get outside and get some stuff done outside too. Yeah, it's been nice. It's been a good change. You know, last couple of springs you're inside for 33 days straight. Oh. You know, trying to trying to engage players and yep. you know see some growth and it's tough. So it's been nice to be able to get outside and. Really get used to running in dirt again, fielding grounders, that type of thing. Yep. And uh, you kept busy, uh, and I, I noticed it on social media, basically Facebook, uh, you kept busy all winter. You had some stuff going on all winter, didn't you? You had some little camps and some trial, not trial, what am I trying to say? But Yeah, open gyms. Open yeah. gyms, there you go. Yeah, yeah, we had Sunday night open gyms for girls third grade up through high school. Yeah. We were averaging about, you know, 30, 35 girls. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's been good. This year, I think, you know, when we helped kind of take over the youth program there. That brought a lot more interest. Okay. So we had a good mix of girls, third through 12, showing up for those open gyms. Yeah, so. that, that's good. And then you yourself, I believe, have a nice little facility at home where you've got your own batting cage and some things. Yeah, I kind of put that keep on the side right now. they have been pretty busy. Oh, yeah, now it would be, yeah. Yeah, but I, yeah, I haven't really done a whole lot with lessons here this year. So okay. I might start that up again at some point, but uh, we're pretty busy this year with other projects. All right, so this is year number three for you? Yep. Year number three. Yep. Uh, let's talk about the assistant coaches first before we get into stuff. So who you got yeah. for assistant coaches? Yeah, so most people know her as Coach Wilson, Margaret yep. Wilson. But she got married, so now we call her Coach K. Coach K. And, you uh, you know, There's a now another Coach K, B-Dub. How about yeah. that? We've got yeah. another Coach K in the system here. We'll, we'll say that she's the real Coach K. She's the real Coach K. Yeah, there we go. There okay. we go. All right, all right. Yeah, and she, you know, she played ball at Valley yep. City in she college, did. you know, yeah. and so it's nice to have her there and just have that female touch with the girls sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, and then Mark Law, my assistant, JV coach, uh, okay. very knowledgeable, uh, plays men's league fast pitch throughout the summer, so I, I feel pretty blessed to have those two just because if I'm not there, I mean, we're all thinking the same thing and kind of moving things in the right direction. Everybody's on, and you've had that same assistant coaches for all three years that you've been there, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, um, let's talk about the field first over at, at Breckenridge. Now, yesterday you were supposed to have a home game uh, with Moorhead that was going to come down here. Then I saw it was switched over to Science for a while. Yeah. And uh, we were still going to broadcast the game. Uh, we were going to broadcast that game on three borders, and then it was switched to Science, and then I text Brian right away and said we're going over to Science. Okay, we're good there. You know, we've done it before. And then I saw it move to Moorhead. So it must have been too wet over at Science yet, huh? Well, Science was supposed to have a game Monday. And then Tuesday was supposed to be their day off. But because Monday was so wet, they had to move the game to Tuesday. Oh, that's what happened. Yeah, so that, that removed our spot. So then we had to go up to Moorhead. And All right, so you went up to Moorhead yesterday. And uh, what are they, class 4A, I think? Yep, uh, 4A. Your, yep. your BW softball team is a 8AA right We're now. We're 2A, yep, yep, yep. Because of the um, co-op. Yep. That's why you got moved up to 2A in yep. that sport. Yep. All right, so you go up there and you take on Moorhead. So this was a non-conference game, obviously. Yep. What were you, uh, when you made the, did you make the schedule or Freddie make the schedule? I, I've been asking to play bigger schools non-conference for the last couple years. Okay. Yeah, and the reason is, you know, like DGF state champs last year. Yeah. Um, they split with Moorhead last year. Okay. You know, so Holly, they're, they're very competitive. So the, the Minnesota schools and even obviously some of the Fargo schools, it's very competitive softball going on. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the girl yesterday is throwing 60 miles an hour. Well, that's what we're going to see from DGF and the Holly sure. pitchers, too. Sure. So it won't be a huge difference for the girls, but I feel like they need to experience that if we're going to have a chance to be competitive as we move through the season. Okay, so you go up to Moorhead, and it looked like you played on the football field. Yep. I, th I thought yep. I saw some of the highlights there that was uh, you guys played on the football field, but that worked out just fine. They had a yep. temporary fence up. Yep. I assume. Yeah, it was actually worked great. I think the girls had a good time. It was a nice setup there, and it yeah, worked really well. Yep. <laughs> Nobody got it went up into the chin or nothing. Yep. All right, so uh, a loss by the girls, but I'm sure they played well, and there was some ob obvious positivity. I think you were ahead up to the fifth inning, if I remember right. Yeah, yeah the makeup of our team is definitely different this year. You know, We lost a lot of, a lot of strong, powerful seniors last year. You know, We had probably six girls last year that could hit it out at will. You know, depending on the game situation, mm -hmm. and uh, this year we have we have four returners, okay. and then the rest of them are on JV. So, you know, five of the nine girls hitting yesterday have never seen this type of pitching or intensity. Oh, so, I bet. so the first four innings, yeah, it went really well. You know, Mia obviously still pitching for us, and she held them to 
you know, three hits through four innings. Um, we were down 2-1, Sydney was on, and Addy uh, hit a home run. So we went up 3-2, and you could kind of feel the momentum shift a little bit there, uh -oh. and, and we had a couple, couple errors, and it just kind of snowballed from there. So first four innings, we played a really good ball, and then, um, you know, we just couldn't find that groove again the last three innings, and we ended up getting tender on in the sixth inning there. Yeah. So. But uh, I, was, I was pretty impressed. I, didn't ex I really didn't expect us to hang on that long just because we, we haven't played yet. Mm -hmm. they, most of the girls haven't played a team of that caliber. Right. So it was definitely a good building block and you know something to use for momentum as we go through the year. And I think tomorrow you go to Pelican. Yeah. So the yep. boys are, the baseball squad is hosting Pelican and you're going to Pelican yep. tomorrow. Is that a doubleheader? Yep, doubleheader, conference doubleheader. game. So, yeah. All right, so talk about the composition of the team now, Coach. Let's, uh, you got a couple of seniors, Addy, or uh, Mia is one of them, obviously. Yep, so we have, we have Mia Dodge and uh, Jocelyn uh, Reby coming back, obviously. Okay. And then um, Sydney Roberts, you know, she's behind the plate and you know, everybody knows Sid, just competitive nature there. Yep. Uh, Jaylee Ernst at first. Okay. And then, um, you know, we have four of them there that This is where your youngsters start yeah. to come in now yeah. after that. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously, I talked about Mia, too. So, but it obviously takes more than that when you're playing these good teams. So right now, it's, I talked to the girls about, we got to find our identity. You know, mm -hmm. we, have, we have Berta Paul stepping in there. We have Skyly Paul's camp, Aubrey Bozen, you know, Claire Lang and Walter. Um, you know, it's, there's a mix of girls from both sides of the river. It's just, okay, how are we going to use them? Okay. To, and to kind of build that that team and what's their identity so so we can win some of these ball games. I saw Aubrey Bozen made a defensive play that I, I read that somewhere where she made a yeah, nice diving. Yeah, definitely catch. ESPN worthy. Line, line shot the right center, ran it down, stuck her glove out the last second, made an amazing catch. So. Byron Buxton. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it was a good one. All right, uh, tomorrow in Pelican again. You're looking to see what you can get built there from the team and what you got. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the good thing about starting with Moorhead and I told the girls this too is you know, that's probably the best competition they're going to see other than DGF. Yeah. This year, so you know, any other game we play, it's just a matter of staying in the game, making the plays, and you know, kind of using that momentum to to stay ahead. And I didn't look that far out in the schedule, Coach. But when's your first home game then? Sixteenth next 16th. week. Sixteenth. So next week, that's Thursday. What, Tuesday. Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Okay. Or no, you're right. Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. So next week, Tuesday, and uh, you'll be at home then. I didn't look to see if that was on our schedule or not, but uh, hopefully everybody's healthy going into the rest of the season. And yeah, it'll be good. Make, make a good run out of it. Yeah. All right. Anything else there, Coach? No. Nope. All right. Anything there? Beat up? You got anything? No? All right. We'll take a break, and then when we come back, we're going to have uh, the track coach from Wabbit, and that is Larry Lash coming up next right here on Three Border Sports. Thanks a lot, Coach, for Thank joining you. us. All right. Your business depends on technology. Digital Guru provides professional IT solutions you can trust to keep it moving forward. From redesigning existing systems to brand new builds, we offer your business managed IT services, including backups, cybersecurity, cloud services, remote desk support, and more. And don't forget, we also provide audio, video, security camera, and door access control installation. Focus on what you do best and leave the technology to the professionals. Contact Digital Guru today. If you're an athlete suffering from an ankle sprain or a hit to the head, did you know that a chiropractic adjustment can decrease ankle swelling by half and get your athlete back to their sport quicker? Or dizziness, brain fog, can come from a neck subluxation? With 20 years of chiropractic experience, Dr. Andrea at Hornstein Family Chiropractic knows personally how chiropractic adjustments can get you back to playing your sport in no time. Request an appointment online at HornsteinFamilyChiropractic.com or call 701-672-1300. Sometimes it's tough being a dad. Kids grow up fast. Hey, girls. Oh, love it. Dad, what are you doing? I'm TikToking. 
Is he serious? Don't even want me around anymore. You know when I first started noticing it? When I stopped getting hugs. Hugs mean a lot to a dad. So, with Command IQ, I found a way to get the hugs back. Watch. Dad, the Wi-Fi is down. Oh, let me see if I can fix it. It's back. Thanks, Dad. You're the best. With Command IQ, you can bring the hugs back. I give you a little bit of buffer. So, I mean, I, I know, but I got to give you a little bit of warning, and, and then we can figure it out. So, Welcome back, everybody, to Blue Border Sports. Coach's show. Now you're ready. Brought to you, you your by microphone Giants. may or may not have been on. Oh, I might. So say, maybe you weren't So whatever ready. I was doing, I was just <laughs> flapping well, my wings. you huh? can start talking now. Welcome back to the Giants Coaches <laughs> Show presented by and brought to you by Red River Communications and Red River Communications Cable Channel 28. We're going to tra talk track for the next uh, oh, half hour, 45 minutes. That's and right, we uh, could. We're going to lead it off here with uh, head coach of the Wapiton boys and girls track teams. That's none other than the one and only popular Larry Lash. Well, thank you. He's a bus driver and everything there. He just That's he does right. a man of many. He does a lot. Man of many hats. <laughs> yeah. You caught the uh, cross country team, so it's just natural for you to go over there. Um, how many years have you been doing it, Larry? Let's talk about that first. Boy, over. I, I've been on a track program of some sort as an athlete or a coach every spring since like 1982. Wow. So that's back when I was in junior high up through. Oh, that was junior high. I was going to say. Ran in college, too. and then after that, I got into teaching and you coaching. You went to Bemidji for college, didn't you? Where no. you going? Jamestown Jimmy. Oh, you're a Jimmy. That's where my son went. <laughs> Eric Erlinson's over there shaking oh, his yeah, hand. Yeah, he's got some. Jimmy's he's stuff. got some Jimmy tracksters too. <laughs> I know his daughter was a, a Jimmy trackster. She was up there at the same a time. Quarter miler. Yep. Yep. She ran the 400. All right, uh, Larry. So you've been doing it for a long time. I have. Yeah. Who, and before we get started onto the team, uh, let's talk about assistant coaches. Who you got with you? You know, I have Rod Brewer back. And he's been, he, he was coaching track before I got to Wapiton here. So he's actually the veteran on our, our staff. Wow. Uh, David Woods is back with our throwers. Okay. And uh, we, we picked up some Breckenridge blood. Oh. We got Kinsey Lanou, now it's Kinsey Gillis. Oh, okay. And uh, she's, she's our, our fourth coach this year. Okay. Yeah, and she does a good job. Good. That's, that's good to see her back. She's also working in the school district, too, doesn't right, she? Right, yep. She's a behavior specialist. Yeah. She's analyzing she us, see how we're behaving. So. Yeah, well, you guys, some <laughs> of you guys need that over there, but <laughs> we'll leave that for another show. <laughs> all right, Larry, uh, you've had a busy season, and again, just like all the other spring coaches that we've had in here, uh, it's nice to get out early. Oh, it's been great. I mean, last year, I, I heard Tom Shemansky tell me that we had 17 inches of snow on the ground this date last year. This date last year. We didn't hit 50 until it got to like early May. Oh yeah, I remember that. So no, we've been making hay outside. It's been nice. We were on the track. We had our, we, we were on track. We, we had the pole ball pit and high jump pit out on day one of practice. Wow. Outside. That is cool. It is, yeah. Yeah, that, that makes a difference when you can get out that early. So, uh, and you, you usually would get out and at least the long distance runners would get out and run, but yeah. you've been able to get everybody outside. Right, and it's shown already. Like Jada Fobb, she already at the, at the meet on Saturday, she already high jumped five feet three inches. Wow. That's two inches better than her best last year. And um, just watching her jump, she uh, she just about got five five. Mm. You know, and I know she's been, Jada's been working hard in the off season this year for track and field. Mm -hmm. So it's not just because we got outside early. She just, it, it, she, she, she has a switch that flipped, and uh, she's competing very well. And I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think she signed somewhere. Correct? Yeah, she signed at NDSU. NDSU, yeah. Yes. The, the other college, Brian. That, that school in Fargo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. All right, so uh, let's just talk about now you've had a busy spring here. You've been able to get outside and do some things, but you've also had, I got three track meets down already. Yeah, we went to, um, well, we went to 
Then we'll talk about the team. Yeah, we went itself. to three indoors, yeah. two in Moorhead, and then the EDC meet was in Grand Forks. And uh, the, the two in Moorhead, we did well. It's a 200-meter track. Yep. And it, it's nice because it's unlimited entry, so every kid on the team gets to go and, and do an event. And uh, now, now we're, we're already in the track meets. For like, like tomorrow, we're going to a meet, and they only want like six runners and four field event people. Wow. So those early meets are very important just so to kind of establish a pecking order. Is it the reason, that I'm going to skip ahead of here a little bit on you, the reason that is, Larry, is because they was, there's so many teams they want to limit the number and cut the time A down. little bit of that. Uh, the meet we're going to tomorrow, for example, is at Horse. Mm -hmm. This their inaugural track meet, never hosted a meet before. Oh, and they just kind of okay. wanted to keep it manageable. They didn't want too many people and okay. to make sure if there was any hiccups that they could get through it. Okay. Gotcha. All right, so let's go back. Now you had the EDC meet. You had a couple meets at uh, Concordia. Um, were you happy as a coach with what you saw? I was really happy. Um, Good. We, the returning kids like on Jada, Scout Woods, Trayton Mauk, Jackson DeVries, they all did what I thought they could do. Yeah. They, they were already right back, leading the team, running well. But we, we got some new kids on the team, like, okay. like Leah DeVries, who played softball. Mm -hmm. Up until this year, she decided to try track. Unbelievable. Oh, wow. Just stepped right in. Just, like she, she's she must placing, be a runner. Yeah, she's, she's running the, the, the sprints and okay. all the way up to a 4x4 four four relay. Okay. Just all of us, all of us coaches are like, wow, where, where has she been these last couple of years? She's got a stride a bit. Yeah, so, so we found some nice surprises. We have some young boys out. We have a good crop of freshman boys. Mm -hmm. And there's a few in that group that are, I think are going to help us out. Um, hmm. uh, we had a, a sophomore, Evan Doctor, who's never yep. ran before. He yep. tweaked his knee a little bit trying to throw a javelin. I heard that. But we got all these brand new kids, and they're just stepping right in. They're trying events. So, yeah, it's been a pleasant surprise. Good. All right, that's good. So let's just talk a little bit more about the team in depth a little bit there, Larry. Uh, numbers that you've got, uh, maybe you even want to mention some names. That's, that's Yeah, we got the biggest team we've had here in a while. We have... Um, I think now we're up to 23 boys or 24. Wow. Another boy just moved into our school district not too long ago, and I heard he wants to join track, and he came to practice here the other day, and he's about six foot one, and he looks like a hurdler and a jumper, and he says he high jumps and long jumps, so so a nice addition there. And our girls are up to 30, 30 some kids. Oh, wow. I'm at the point where I'm, I'm telling the bus garage, either get me two buses or we need a bus and two or three bands or oh, yeah. something, so it's, it's a nice problem. That is a nice problem. Nice problem, have. yeah. Yep. And uh, what else you seeing out there with the team? Well, our, our EDC meet, the throwers got to go outside. It was a nice day. It was really windy. It was last Saturday when everything was oh, blowing yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the kids ran inside at the UND. It's the new Brian. It was a planned indoor meet, though. It was a planned indoor meet. Okay. Yep. Okay. It's at the Brian Watson Athletic Center. Oh, yeah, that's in, right. In, they yeah. named that after yeah. him. Yeah. Here <laughs> we go. Here we go. Come on now. <laughs> We did talk about the Hislop, Brian, as we drove by, and, and we were going to get you a piece of the hardwood before they tear it down. I want a brick or something yeah, from yeah, that something. place. I mean, come on, I spent a lot of time in that building, so I should get something. <laughs> no. So the throwers went outside, and once you're outside, you can qualify for state track meet. Oh. And Scout Woods already qualified. In a, you know, she's defending state champ in the shot put. Yep, yep. And she's already qualified the shot put and the discus. Both of them. Yep. Both on her first throws. Yep. Now, first throws qualify, get that out of the way. Yep. So uh, she, she let her throwers out there. Then Jada, I mentioned indoors, she had a great high jump, and she's been running the 400. Yep. And her, and we mentioned Leah DeVries, uh, Helly Miller, and Taylor Mauk, they teamed up in a 4x2, and they ran a time that would be state qualifying if it had been an outdoor meet. Oh, wow. On an indoor track. It was... So you should be pretty happy with yeah. what you see. I think the qualifying time is like 151 or 152, and, and they ran like a 149 something. Wow. So, I mean, not just like barely, it was like, so we're hoping tomorrow we go outside at Horace. It's supposed to be windy, but I think we have enough speed to, to fight through that. And okay. Looking for a big thing from, for those four girls, just, we got four solid sprinters this year. Who was on that four by two? Um, it was Jada and Leah, Hallie Miller, and eighth grader Taylor Monk. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, and, and last year we couldn't even get a girls sprint relay team qualified. Hmm. And, and that's kind of, Coach Brewer and I were talking. Uh, Hallie Miller's back in better shape than she was last year. And uh, Leah DeVries is just the X factor. Yeah. Just another speedster out there. Yeah. And um, along with, you know, Taylor's just an eighth grader. Okay. So yeah. I don't really think she knows her potential yet. Hmm. But we have um, a couple other, Lucy Comstock. Is that Cambry's sister then? I don't know. Is it's that Trayton's sister. Trayton's sister. Oh, Trayton's sister. Yeah. Okay. Um, Lucy Comstock and Gracie Falk, my two good cross country runners, 
they're out and they're already helping out in our four by four relay and, and uh, Lucy just ran a mile for the first time. So they're pretty solid. And the other kid that I think would qualify for state sooner than later will be um, Elise Goldbolt in the pole vault. Oh, wow. A gymnast and uh, she's vaulting very well for just being a freshman. Good. Yeah, so, so those girls right there all placed for us at the EDC indoor meet. And uh, I think they're gonna kind of carry our team this year. Good. And uh, we have some other good throwers. Um, Claire Woods is yep. Scout's younger sister, and yep. she placed in both the shot put, and um, she dismissed placing in the discus. As an eighth grader. As an eighth grader. Yep. Julia Lopez-Lee has been placing consistently. Um, Ella Langenwalter in the throws. So yeah, we just have a nice balance with the girls' team. Yeah. We've got some distance runners, some field event people. I was gonna jumpers. ask about the distance runners. Uh, yeah, that would be Lucy Comstock yep. and Gracie. Yeah. Yep, there you are. Yeah. You're very familiar with those two. Right, right. So no, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to the season with, with that bunch. Yep. And our boys team, uh, like I said, we're really young. A lot of freshman boys. Uh, Trayton Mauk has consistently placed in all the sprints this mm -hmm. year. And uh, Jackson DeVries is, is um, he, he's a little bit faster, I think, than he was last year. Wow. And he's running right next to Trayton. I was going to say he was running pretty good last year in the sprints. Yeah, he, he, he high jumped at the EDC indoor meet. I knew he, he liked to high jumps, kind of dabbled in it. And he was like a 5'8", 5'10". He okay. went six feet. Did he really? And I didn't even think he worked on it that much. Wow. And Brewer came over and said, yeah, Jackson just cleared six feet. I'm like, no way. No, oh, wow. Well, good then friend. he came back and uh, he placed in, um, he um, ran to 55 and the 200. And mm -hmm. so he, he's going to do a lot of good stuff for us this year. J.D. Gomez is another one that last year kind of um, was just starting to make some waves. And this year he's placed in the hurdles every time he's run it. And, mm -hmm. He had a great split in the mile relay at one of the Moorhead meets. He ran a kid that was about 20 yards in front of him down and passed him and hung uh -huh. on. So he, he's showing a lot of poise. And then uh, Noah Berge, senior cross country runner. Oh, yeah. There you go. He'll run our distance. And kind of an X factor right now with Bob Hockert. Carter Bob Hockert. Yeah, Carter Bob Hockert. He yeah. high jumps, he'll run the 400. He wants to get a spot running in the sprint relays. So hmm. we'll kind of see how he fits in the mold, but he's okay. a good trackster as well. Yeah. So around those five boys, Trayton, Jackson, JD, Noah, and Bob, we're gonna kind of build our team. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, Carter, Bob, Hawker, Dad, uh, Bob, I didn't know who it was. Well, then everybody <laughs> had to tell me it was Carter. And I figured that out last summer, but anyway. Yeah, I'm not sure if I should call him Carter or Bob. Everybody calls every, him Bob, Everybody calls him Bob, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Everybody does. Um, what else we gotta cover? Anything else, Larry? No, I think uh, we're just Going to kickstart our outdoor season tomorrow up at Horace, yep. and uh, we'll have good competition, and hopefully the wind doesn't blow too strong, so I'm looking forward to it. I didn't look at the wind. I didn't realize there was supposed to be some, some wind. Some wind, tomorrow. yeah. Okay. And right. next week, uh, the Breck coaches can tell you that they're hosting their KT Smith over in Wapiton, so we'll That's going to be here, huh? Okay. So um, we'll get to run against some local teams here next week, so next it'll be fun. Week. Yeah. All right. When's that? Thursday. Thursday, okay. Yeah, right. I'll let them talk about the KTS here. Yep, sir, absolutely. Baby. Yep, they're coming up next. So uh, Larry Lash, head coach of the uh, girls and boys track squads. And uh, as Larry mentioned here, we got uh, Michael McCall and Eric Erlinson. Eric's going to come up first and talk about the uh, the boys track side on the, on the uh, Minnesota side of the river. Coming up next right here on Three Border Sports. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. There's never a bad time to get your ride sparkling at All Seasons Car Wash. Your ride deserves to shine all year round. We'll see you at All Seasons Car Wash. Bold Print in Wapiton is your local provider for all of your printing and promotional needs, including custom decals, which is a great way to promote your business. Bold Print also has custom framing and unique personalized gift ideas. Don't trust your family photos to an online company. Use Bold Print for all of your custom framing and canvas printing. Give them a call today, 701-642-2188, or check them out online, useboldprint.com. Lucky for us, life is full of choices, big and small. They define us, make us who we are. And when it comes time for you to choose a car, home, 
your next big adventure or start a new business. Farmers Union Insurance has the variety of coverage options to protect each perfect moment. Farmers Union Insurance. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Wapit and Deli and Eatery, serving delicious deli staples paired with great service and friendly staff. They use the best ingredients and provide a great atmosphere. If you have an office party or an at-home celebration, Wapit and Deli and Eatery can help with your next event. And now you can order online for in-store pickup. Check it out at wapitanddeliandeatery.com or call 642-3639. I'm still learning how to do all this. So <laughs> we can talk now. <laughs> you can talk now, yeah. All right. So I'll welcome everybody back and then we'll get Yeah, going. you Is it working? It's it's yeah, working. You're fine. I'm okay. I don't, you're all right. All right. Yeah. All right. Welcome don't back. Have to hold it up like this? <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. All right. Welcome back everybody to the Giants Coaches Show. Uh, brought to you also by three oh, geez. Now you, you, you want to start over? You want yeah. me to yeah, do <laughs> music again? <laughs> Giants Coaches Show presented by Red River Communications and Red River Communications Cable Channel 28. And uh, uh, we are now talking some more track, and we've got the Cowboys track head coach here, Eric Erlinson, joining us. Coach, thanks, thanks for having us. Thanks for coming on board. Yeah. Appreciate been, you being here. It's been uh, a great year. Yeah, it has been so far, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you helped out with the wrestling squad and uh, jumped right into track. Well, you uh, were with the football, football squad and then too. wrestling. And I tell you, this is my 36th year of teaching, and I've never been busier because, you know, I used to always coach football and wrestling, and spring was my You're time kind of to, to come out for air. And, yeah. You know, and now I took on the track. So, it's, so how many years is this track? Three? Two? This is my third year. Third yep, year. Yep, third lucky year to work track. with some good people there. All right, so. so while we're talking about that, who you got for assistance in eight? So. On the boys we were, I work. We, 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 we kind of work all together. Yeah. In Breck, we we kind of just take different areas. Yep. And so Michael uh, McCall, the girls' coach, he he takes the distance and he takes care of the, the girls and their uh, events. And then we have um, uh, Noah Brennan. Okay. He is taking care of our throwers, our discus, and on both sides, both on boys both sides. And girls? Yep. Yep. Okay. So he's taking care of the throwers. Okay. And then we have uh, Sierra Hansey. Oh yeah. She's kind of the jack of all trades. She yep. knows a little bit about everything. So she's yeah. helping with the sprinters and the jumpers and. And uh, the hurdlers, and I mean, she, she helps with the, the handoffs and everything. Yeah. You know, she's, she knows a lot about track, and she's loving it, and she's doing a really great job. So yeah. that's the four of us that are working with them this year. So There you go. Yeah. That's a good deal. Um, all right, Coach, so what do you got going here so far? What's happened this year so far? Well, Again, you got out you know, early just like everybody we else. We did. We got out early. It was like, we're, I'm like, and this is... This is looking really good. All of a sudden, we get this snowstorm. It's yeah. like, okay, we've had more snow now yeah. since, than we had yeah, all January and February, yeah. you know. Yep. So it was like, oh, crumb, here we go again. But yeah. no, it, it melted pretty good. And um, we actually were, we started out in Fergus. It was a beautiful night in Fergus um, last week. And we hadn't much time to get much in as far as working on our field events. But we thought, let's just go and do it and get some times and some yep. distances. And, yep. and and the kids did really pretty well. We the boys team this year, we have more more kids. We have some good senior leadership, and I can I can kind of mention. Yeah, absolutely. Guys. So, Go ahead. You know what? A big part of you know any track program is your leaders, and yep. so again we have Bailey Evans coming back oh, as yeah, a senior. You, yep. you know I hate to see him go. I don't want to see him go. I, I believe someone told me he's going to St. John's. I, I think it's St. John's. What I, I think I saw that's it, what yep. somebody told me. So yep, he's yep. you know we're going to lose him to St. John's. They got a good kid there. Yep. Uh, well, and Jacob Kunkel. And again, yep, he's going to Southwest. Yeah, uh, I think I think uh, Bailey's going to play football. I think, and Jacob's going to go do track there. Track so you, there, you know, yeah. you got two college athletes that are helping leading your team, the way. leading the way, and that's yeah. really nice. It just in, yeah. not just in their ability, but their yep. just the way they, they conduct themselves. So yep. uh, we have Ethan Loretson. He's our our guy that does everything I want him to do. He's you know nobody wants to run the 800 and 400. You know, it's a tough <laughs> race. You know, and he does it and. I say, you running both? Yep, and he'll do them both. And, you know, so quiet, but he just does whatever you ask. He's a workhorse for our team. So yep, yep. nice of him. And, and uh, Brian Martinez came out again this year. Okay. He's a senior. And he talked to his brother, Alan, into coming out. There you go. And Alan is like, <laughs> after the first meet, I never knew this was this competitive. This is awesome, he says. This is, <laughs> I wish I'd have done this earlier, you know. So I was yeah. like, yeah, Alan, this is pretty fun. It's, it's really competitive. So they're both enjoying, enjoying it. They're both seniors. And then 
uh, Tucker uh, Shocker came out yeah. this year. Okay. He's been a really good addition to our, our sprinters, and he's really competing in the top. You know, he's really up there and, and fighting hard to, to be in the top at the, nice. in our section in our region. So That's pretty quick. Those are our seniors, and they've done a really nice job keep, keeping our things going. So That's awesome. Yep. Uh, we, we started in Fergus. I was going to say this. Yep. Yeah, yep. We started in Fergus. We got 31 points. Um, not very many points, but we had, there was three big dogs there. Detroit Lakes has some really oh. good runners. Yeah. Their throwers are amazing. Yeah. Um, I think they had like, I, I think I looked at the sheet, it was like Detroit Lakes, Detroit Lakes, Detroit Lakes, Detroit Lakes <laughs> at the top of, the, you know, for throwing. Sure. So they had some really good throwers. Perm was there and Fergus was there. So, you know, those were three tough, tough teams with some really good kids. So mm -hmm. we scored 31 points, but... Taking a look at our placers there, now Bailey Evans got sixth place in the 100, which is really good for yep. that kind of, you know, that for kind that, of competition, that, taking six is a really nice for that thing. that competition level, yep. that's pretty good. And then we have a, a new junior that came out this year, Isaiah Hill, uh -huh. and he ended up taking eighth in the 100. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's a, a nice for a junior, and we're, yeah. we're excited for what Isaiah can do and help our team out. So uh, other placers, Troy Burnt, our, our uh, freshman, he took third in the two mile. Oh, wow. And uh, you know so Perm's there, and runner. so I, you know, I that's pretty good. When Perm's there, yeah. and you're taking third in the two mile, that's yeah. that's a pretty good deal. So yeah. um, we we have enough kids now with a few more that came out. We have a relay team this year. We did a four by one. They end up taking second. That's pretty good. That was. It's really good. Though, again, year. with the competition you have there, and we're taking yeah. second with our four by one. That was. That's what kind of time did they run? Uh, they ran a uh, forty-eight two. Forty-eight two. That's yeah. a pretty good time. Yeah, and it was that that relay was David Rowanson, Ethan Jant. Uh, Ethan, David's a sophomore, Ethan's a freshman, mm -hmm. and then Tucker and Bailey Evans. So they, it really, it's really fun when you can start to get enough guys and get those relays yeah. going. Yeah. Last year we struggled with that yep. because we just didn't have enough, that. enough to get the relays going. So we're hoping to get even yeah. more relays going as we go here. So, yeah. And then obviously Jacob Kunkel uh, took first. And say. really few jumps on our pit, really few jumps this year, and he went, Five ten. Oh, I was going to ask. Fergus. You made six, but well, well, I'll talk about. They went. I can. The next one, uh, we just had one last night in Barnesville. Yes, he went, that's he right. went six he went, two. Yep. Yeah. So he, he did and go six two. He did go six two, and he actually had um, one of our coaches was videotaping him. He went on six four, or was it six? Yeah, he went six two and six four. He was going over and just caught his back of his heel mm. or you know his calf a little bit. He yeah. said, I think I could have got 6'6". Six, six. So that's, you know, he's right there. Yep. Just keep working on things. It's early. So, yep, it's early. And, you know, he's, he's you know, just... Was it just a dual meet in Barnesville? No, no Barnesville, I, I, I can... Actually, I can go right to that. I think I got everything done there for... So Barnesville, yeah. we, play, we scored 50 points in Barnesville okay. as a team. And, uh, you know, we, we were behind Purim, Pelican, Park Christian, and Frazee. And they've got some really studs. But, we, you know, we beat Barnesville, uh, Wadena Deer Creek, we were above. And so we, we beat some good teams there. Um, so Bailey got fourth in the 100. Isaiah Hill got sixth in the 100. Uh, Tucker got a PR, and he got a 14th, but he got a PR uh, 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 in the 100 there. Mm -hmm. um, placing in, well, he didn't place, they only placed six places, but Bailey in the 200 got eighth place. Okay. So he didn't place, but he got eight, eighth yep. out of the, Yep. so um, what else do we have for places? And a two mile, this is, you know, and again, I don't know, <clears throat> Perm was there. And I don't know if they have some runners not there, but uh, Troy took first in the two mile. Wow. And, you know, and again, any, even if you're, uh, you know, you know exactly what, what was there, I don't That's know if good. they, yeah, usually like Perm has some pretty, yeah. I mean, top in the I, state I kind of run, runners, you know, and, yeah. I, and I, so I'm not sure um, if they were resting somebody or what, but, you know, but at any, any, any rate, taking first in the yeah. Two miles, pretty pretty good deal. And he had a PR also at, in it, in good. doing that. So that's pretty good, good race. Our four by one took second again. Um, that was David, Ethan Jan, and then I put it in Isaiah Hill jumped in on the in the four by one, and then Bailey in that. Um, a shot put. We had Eli Butts took fifth. He sh he threw the shot uh, thirty nine feet eight inches. That was a his best this year. Good. And then um, placing second for us and placing seventh overall was Bailey Evans. Oh, so Bailey wow. is like, one day he was... In the shot? Yes, in the shot. That's what I'm saying. It was, we were like at uh, practice, and we got done with the handoffs and the sprinting stuff, and, and a lot of them do their cool-down stretch, and they're all going in, and pretty soon, about 15 minutes later, Bailey comes over, I want to throw a shot. I said, what do you mean? Well, Coach... Coach uh, Coach, uh, <clears throat> Coach you know, thinks I should throw the shot. I just threw the shot, <laughs> and he said... So I put him in the shot, and here he's 
throw in the shot second best for our team there. <laughs> I think that's I think that's kind of that is you know, pretty good. He is an amazing, you know, just yeah, an all-around athlete. athlete, strong and yep. quick and fast. So, yeah. Yep. Um, so what else we got? And, and now in the distance, well, there was quite a few teams there. There was the two teams yeah. there. There was eleven teams there. Eleven teams. You know, we yeah. placed fifth out of eleven. Um, so I'm I'm excited. This is an exciting year. Uh, in discus, Brian Martinez was our best thrower. He got fifth with a throw of 117.5 or 9.5, and that was a PR for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eli Butts got uh, sixth, so he was yeah. right, right behind He's right there. Brian. So, yeah. And then, you know, we had some others, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, long jump. Now, Jacob is uh, known for the high jump, but yeah. he's also in the long jump. But yep. Tucker got, took third in the long jump for us, 18.7. Uh, and then Jacob took fourth, fourth. with 18.4. Okay. And they both can, I know they're, they're just getting started. I mean, yeah. they're both pretty... I think I'm excited for where they end up this year. So, yep. yeah. So, we uh, that, that's kind of our season. Our points. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And the first two meets. So how many boys total? Uh, how many say? boys total? It looks like. Did we say? I no. didn't say, but I, I think we did. Um, you know, it looks like I would. <laughs> I didn't even. I've never counted it up. Okay. But we got a lot of ninth graders, a few tenth graders, and our seniors really dominate. You know, a couple of a couple of. Uh, Juniors and, and some seniors. It looks like it's about 20, 20 okay. 22. Oh, I bet fine. you Michael always knows the numbers better than I do. I always look to Michael and he tells me how many, <laughs> tells me the numbers. So, but we'll, we'll he talk. shook his head. Yeah, that's about where we're that's at. About where so we're I, at. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Well, we'll talk to Michael about the uh, KT Smith uh, yeah, track yeah. meet next week. That sounds too, good. And uh, we'll talk to him about that. But uh, uh, you got anything else you want to add? No, just kind of like uh, I was just going through our point leaders right now. Yeah. And, you know, obviously Jacob is yeah. our leader. You know, he's with that high jump, he gets a lot of points. So he got 22 points this already in two meets. Uh, Troy Burnt is second, though. He's wow. got, you know, our, distance, our distance guy. Yeah. He's, you've got 16 team points for us. That's a and then uh, Tucker Shocker is coming up with 14 team points for us. So followed by Bailey with nine and then David with eight. So David is in the shot or the pole vault. And he's just learning it. But, yep. you know, that's a kind of a specialized that's, thing. And... Yep. Just just getting over the bar sometimes gets you some points. So yeah, I always thought that was something easy to do, and then when I did try it, it was like, no, I don't want to do that. No, anymore. it's so. it's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, yeah, pretty crazy. All right, head coach of the Cowboys track squad, that's Eric Erlinson. Thanks Thank for you. joining us, Eric. Appreciate yep. it. Thanks. We got Michael McCall coming up next right here on Three Borders Sports Network. We'll be right back. <laughs> We see potential like nowhere else. Here, vision is boundless. That's why we never settle. We look for the moments when everything becomes possible. The moments that inspire us to make every day better. In this place, there's no such thing as good. There's only great. This is orthopedics and sports medicine like nowhere else. The folks at Tyler Farm Supply understand that farming is hard work, and that's why they only offer durable and reliable short-line farm equipment that you can depend on. Whether you're a small-scale farmer or manage a large operation, they have the tools that you need to get the job done quickly and efficiently. Plus, with their competitive pricing and financing options, Tyler Farm Supply makes it easy for you to get the equipment you need without breaking the bank. Give them a call today, 701-642-8827. Every business begins with an idea. With dedication, hard work, and high-speed broadband, that idea can grow into something giant. The member organizations that form BAND are proud to support North Dakota businesses every step of the way, from the soil to the stadium. The Broadband Association of North Dakota, helping North Dakotans grow bright ideas into big business. Yes, you are, buddy. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you start talking. I got I to gotta turn down the music. All so. right, I'll start talking. There you go. All right, the Giants Coaches Show, everybody. Welcome back to Three Borders Sports Network, and it's also presented to you by Red River Communications and Red River Communications Cable Channel 28. I'm Joe Schreiner. He's Brian Watson. Our first spring coaches show of the year, B-Dub. Let's go 
going pretty well, too. Hopefully. Yeah. Let me turn my mic back on. It's going pretty well, too. Everybody's been on time, and we're not too far off of time. I think I'm a little bit fast. I think, I think, I, think uh, I asked Michael to come in at 840. Yeah. I think Ralph got us behind. So All right, I we mean, can always blame him. Yeah. Or we can blame him for technical difficulty, too. Well, so. we're, we're rolling pretty good right now. So All right. We'll see so what happens we'll, uh, we'll finish up with Michael McCall, head coach of the uh, Cowgirls track squad. Michael, yep. thanks for coming back. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you coming back. This is your number two this or my three? third year. Is it your third yeah. year already? <laughs> yeah. Good Lord, we're all getting old. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, three years is a, and I think uh, Coach Erlinson talked about all your assistants. So you guys share the same assistants. And, yeah, and you actually share duties with him as well. The way it sounded, so you yeah. do some things. Go ahead and explain your responsibilities. How um, you see it? Yeah. Well, well, mostly during, it's mostly broken up in practice. So I take the long distance and I help out a little bit with the high jumping and stuff because we. Not you know, necessarily girls. It's girls and boys. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And because we're down one coach from last year, so we only have uh, four on, uh, this year as opposed to the five we had last year. So, you know, we all kind of took on a little bit more responsibility trying to to help out. So, like, Sierra's taking a lot of, like, the long jumpers with the sprinters, so I had to help out a little bit with the, the high jumpers. And Eric's helping out a little bit with the pole vaulters, you know, when Kyler's not around because he's only volunteer. So yeah. he's coming in whenever he can, and that's, and that's nice. And actually, like, a huge shout-out to Jacob Gunkel, um, because he's helped out a lot with our high jumpers. Oh, I bet. I mean, huh? he he knows a lot. He's gone to a lot of camps. He's going to college for it, and he's helped out a lot with. Well, that's cool. With that, and I could see him doing that. That's pretty cool of <clears throat> him, yeah. and uh, good young man. So, that's pretty cool. All right. So so far, uh, again, it's been a busy season already for you too. You've had an indoor and an outdoor uh, well, meet. Well, we had our we had our indoor meet. That was the one day of the year we had a, a snow day. No. So we didn't get to go, and that's exactly what happened last See, year too. That's right. Okay. They still had the meet two years in a row, but uh, we weren't able to go. Oh we man. We canceled school, but we've had two outdoor. All so right, far. two outdoor. Yeah. That's what I'm yep. saying. Yep. Yep. I was thinking the first one was an indoor, but yeah, it was two outdoor. You went to Fergus, and then here. Yep. So and then we're at yep, Barnesville. Barnesville yesterday. Yep. yep. So let's talk about those. You got results. You just want to talk about yeah. the team. What do you want? Well, to do? I was I was going to start with talking first about some seniors, this... and then okay. uh, yeah, go ahead and then talk about some results. So. Uh, returning, we have we have Haley Hansen, who's yeah. you know uh, she qualified in the four by two and the two hundred last, uh, not the two, four by two and high jump last year. Okay. Um, this year she's doing some long jump for us, four by one, four by two, some open two hundreds because she qualified a couple years ago in the two hundred. Not doing high jump. She didn't really want to do the high jump anymore. Okay. So you know, as long as she's still staying busy and yeah, doing a lot of stuff, plenty events to yeah, do. Yeah. Whatever she wants to do is fine. And then yeah. uh, Joy Watson's another senior for us and. She's shifted this year. She was doing more of the sprinting events last year, and now she's doing, you know, she's on our 4x8, which mm -hmm. is that we've been able to have a 4x8 team this year, and she's doing the 800 and the 400 sometimes. Um, Haley Bruce, um, she's doing the 4x8 and the 800 as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Brenna Ruddy, who's new this year. Um, this is her first year being out. Well, I've been here. I think she did, uh, you know, in middle school. Okay. Um, but she's doing long jump, 4x1, uh, she's going to try some hurdles right now. She's just getting used to that. I was going to say, is she the younger sister of, of Aiden, yeah. Aiden? So yep. she's not a distance runner like him. No. Okay. No, she's she's uh, actually pretty quick. So we got some times on All her. Right. You know, she w she didn't make it to Fergus, but she uh, made it on Tuesday. So we got some times okay. with her. And then uh, Ashlyn Hare is our last one. All right. Um, she's been a distance runner in the past, but she's kind of trying out some new things this year. She, uh, you know, she's been off trying some shot put and some discus and mm. she's just trying to do some new things and yep. have some more fun you know uh like yep. eric mentioned like bailey's out there trying new things and we got a lot yep. of that this year just uh you know girls and boys just moving to different events and trying some new things out and it's been yep. pretty nice yep um so you got some results there you wanted to mention or you want to mention the rest of the team you you do whatever uh, you want yeah i was just going to mention some results yep. uh go ahead just a couple highlights like our four by two team which is uh parker yagi Oh, yeah. Haley Hansen, her younger sister Chastity Hansen, yep. and then Emily Gowan, uh, they qualified for sections last year, mm -hmm. and in our first meet they took first place, and then uh, yesterday they ended up taking second. So that's been really good to see. Their it's, handoffs. You got some sprinters there in yeah, that one. Yeah, they're really good 200 runners. Yep. Uh, uh, three of those are also in the four by one, but uh, Chastity doesn't do it. Brenna's in there, so it's okay. Parker, Haley, Brenna, and uh, and Emily and. And that one we've taken third and fourth. Okay. Um, not quite as good at the 100, but 
again, we, we're improving and we're building upon yep. that time. So yep. uh, that 4 by 2 is one that really excited for and really looking forward to them uh, doing well yep. throughout the season. Yep, absolutely. Um, and then Mariah Coltis, who's a ninth grader. Oh, yeah. we, we missed her for most of the year last year because she, uh, uh, I think, broke her ankle, something like that. Something. Um, she's taking second in the high jump in both wow. meets. Um, she jumped 4-8 last year that's just what brian watson wants to hear is the lady huskies head coach is that <laughs> there's a freshman over in breckenridge yeah. that plays basketball that can do well in the high jump that's just yeah. what he wants to hear that's exactly i don't want i don't want to hear any of that stuff <laughs> okay. so just keep that to yourself all right <laughs> all right Michael, she, uh, go ahead. she jumped four eight at the she had like two or three meets last year and she jumped four eight and so we were pretty excited for her to come in i'm and, sorry what did she hit this year uh she's done four ten at both meets okay um She's been so close on five feet. Okay. But the thing is, we haven't really gotten out and practiced a ton. We haven't had a lot of opportunities. So, like, she doesn't have her steps down all that well, and all of it's still pretty fresh for her. Okay. You know, just starting at the end of last year. Yeah. So to see her go 4'10 is, is really good because some, some like, <clears throat> I watched her do her 4'8 jump at the first meet, and she had almost just stopped and jumped over the yeah, bar. Yeah, that hurdled it. And I was like, well, that's incredible. Yeah. Like, we can get you going at full speed. Who knows how how uh, now is Jacob high working with her a little bit too? Jacob's working with her a lot. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then Chastity Hansen is another one that we have uh, high jumping this year, and she four six at the first meet, and then she did mm. four eight at the last meet. Wow. And she was very close on four ten actually. Wow. So that's another one that we're pretty. And she took fifth uh, at the last meet. So that's another one that we're pretty excited um, to get up there. And a, a lot of credit goes to Jacob because he's worked with him. Very cool. Worked with them quite Very cool. A bit. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool sidebar note. <sighs> yeah. And uh, Haley Hansen took uh, third in the 200 in her first meet. Um, Emily Gowan took fifth in this last meet. This last meet was, yeah. was full of a lot of uh, good girls, top, okay. top sprinters. Pelican has a lot of great ones, Frazee. Purim. Sure. So that was some pretty tough competition. A lot of HOL teams for, there, yeah, too. Some okay. pretty tough competition for... for uh, the one two hundred there, yeah. Um, but overall, I've been. It's been pretty good. I, for the I first would say two it meets sounds and, pretty good. Yeah, <clears throat> and I think it's only going to get better. So, yeah. uh, a lot to look forward to there. Um, we have a meet on Friday, in Perm. In Perm. And that should be another one with some pretty good competition. Some more H O L teams there, I'm sure. Yeah. And yeah. next Tuesday we go right back to Perm. I'm not sure why they have their meets almost back to back. They're like that, hmm. but um, and then you had mentioned. Yeah, I want to talk uh, about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, KT Smith next next Thursday, April 18th. And you'll have it over here. At, and we'll have it at, at NDSCS. Yeah, yep. we did uh, we did the Anderson Schuler at NDSCS last year, and it went it went really well. Yeah, uh, it's a nice facility. Um, and I'm happy that they'll let us use it. Yeah, um, I shouldn't say Frank Burton Field. It's Owen and D Jensen track. Yeah, so, um, but this is uh, this would be my first time having the KT Smith. We've canceled it the last two years because oh. we've never we've never even started the season this early. Sure, so sure. It's, uh, so it's pretty exciting to have both meets this year. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully there's no rain or anything coming Thursday or May 9th is when we have our Anderson Schuler okay. also here Over at NDSCS. Yes, so. Okay. Well, that's cool. Um, looking forward to a good year then. I know Eric was saying that it, he was excited about the boys and it sounds like the girls have got it on track too. No pun intended. Yeah, yeah. Um, this year should be pretty good. Um, we got a lot of people trying new things. Uh, there's people jumping, throwing, uh, doing hurdles. Um, so hopefully by the end of the year they'll find kind of what they're good at and what they want to do yeah. And, yeah. and we're rolling. Um, just trying to get more girls to come out because, you know, uh, this is the most boys we've had since I've been here, and uh, I think this is the least amount of girls we've had since hmm. I've been here. Um, we have no 7th graders, and we have one 8th grader. Oh, wow. So it's it's all pretty much ninth through 12th. I think I have one junior, too, so yes. it's a lot of ninth, 10th, and 12th graders. So, wow. So we're looking to get, you know, there's a lot of girls that, uh, that came out two years ago. They're not coming out now. It came out last year. So we're just really looking, trying to encourage them to come out and try try anything. Try something, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, just... Uh, Look up coach and then talk to him about yeah. it. You got anything else you want to talk about? I don't think so. You got anything else? No, I don't think so. B-Dub, you got anything else? I got nothing else. Okay, we're going to come back and wrap this up. Sure. We let's do, let's, let's do right. that. 
head coach of the Cowgirls track squad. That's Michael McCall. Michael, thanks for joining us again. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back. Uh, Brian and I will wrap this show up, and uh, we'll be right back in a couple of minutes right here on Three Borders Sports. Yeah. We make sure that when you need a vehicle, we'll find the perfect one that matches your lifestyle and budget, like the eye-catching Chevy Equinox, the powerful, always dependable Chevy Silverado, or the rugged, hard-working GMC Sierra. Since 1960, Smith Motors has provided an excellent automotive buying experience. From low-pressure sales to high-quality service, our customers always come first. Find your new Chevrolet or GMC today at Smith Motors. Small-town friendly, big-town deals. Advantage is proud to support our local Twin Town teams. They'd like to remind farmers that the Yield Advantage team is ready to help you get the W next planting season. They can help get your equipment in game shape with upgrades large and small. Yield Advantage is your local precision planting premier dealer. From row cleaners to closing wheels, seed meters to liquid fertilizer systems and everything in between. If you want to give yourself a competitive edge next season, contact Yield Advantage today. A local insurance team ready to serve you. American Family Insurance, Miller & Associates. Providing home, auto, life, farm, and business insurance. As residents of your community, they understand how important it is to be there for you, their trusted friends and neighbors. Together, they're building strong partnerships that help everyone succeed. American Family Insurance, Miller & Associates. A proud supporter of high school athletics. And we hope to see you at American Family Insurance, Miller Associates. Since 1941, Minn Kota Ag Products has been helping farmers with their agricultural needs. The farming industry has expanded at great lengths, and Minn Kota Ag Products is there to provide farmers with their entire chemical, fertilizer, seed, and grain elevator needs. They also offer deep band tillage, chemical application, and fertilizer application, just to name a few. For market access at your fingertips, and information essential to your farm operation, download the Minn Kota Egg Products app. Minn Kota Egg Products, proud to be a partner in your farm operation since 1941. Can you hear the music? No. Uh, no. You can't? No. What about? That doesn't matter. I can hear it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the Giants Coaches Show. And it is presented by Red River Communications, our first spring show, B-Dub. We call that a success? I, I think so. We had a lot of coaches here. What did we have? Eight? One, Eight two. coaches. And yeah. we kind of kept it under two hours. Yeah, we so did. We were close. So. If, you, if you cut off the extra time that Ralph spent, <laughs> we we got it. Two, we got it. Two we hours. did. We yep. nipped it in two yep. hours. Yeah. Yep. He likes to he likes to work in you know a little extra time for him. So yeah, it's all about him. We'll, well, <laughs> I don't know about that. Hopefully he's watching. So I'll he, hear about he, that. So we know watching. that we're talking about him. So the other thing I was thinking here during this commercial break, you need to maybe put on your announcer voice, like your Gelman off on the side, and you could say, "All right, welcome back to Three Borders Four. You could do that on the side. Then I'll know when the queue is. I don't need all that stress. I got too much <laughs> stuff going on over here. So I'm just happy that we didn't have any. Everything worked the way that it was supposed to. Yep. Uh, the curse of Jeff Ralph did not, you know, work his yep. way into nope. the show tonight. Nope. So I don't know. It's pretty good. All right. I'll take it. Hey, we got we to gotta wish uh, one of our viewers, one of our faithful viewers, a, a bladed happy birthday. I think number 88-ish. For Sir James Watson. Yeah, I so suppose happy we could birthday, do that. Sir yeah. James. yeah, I was in Illinois this weekend, and uh, he had about 88 people at his birthday party. I bet so, he did. Um, Probably yeah. 888. Well, we had to cut the list down, that's for <laughs> sure. So, uh, yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. He didn't know I was coming, so oh, my cool. wife and my daughter. And uh, so it was, a, cool. it was a good surprise. It was a good time, too. So That was good. And, yeah, and, and he got a really nice gift. 
He got a one of a kind three border sports network uh, sweatshirt, so no he's way. happy about that. Wow, yeah, he's happy about that, and he had he actually had this particular hat on. Yep, at the birthday party. Yep. So you that's know, the one that there's only three of those. There are only three the in the world, I guess. Yep. So now he has a sweatshirt to go with it, and there's only one in the world. So. Anything that uh, that he gets that is uh, one off, he's pretty happy about. So. I bet he is. Yeah, yeah. All right. So he's a special guy, Sir James Watson. Happy belated birthday, my friend. Uh, thanks for your support too, as well. All right, B Dub, we got some baseball coming up. We got baseball on Thursday. Uh, yep. The Breckenridge Cowboys will be taking on the Pelican Rapids Vikings. Yeah, it should be a good game too. At 4 p.m. Yeah, Jack was pretty excited, and uh, he, he had a nice Jack win gets and, me pumped up. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like he starts talking, I'm like, dude, give me a glove, I'll go play. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I don't know, man. I yeah. just, some coaches do that, so yeah. I wish so I could do that. I can't. I can't be like that. Um, I have a different way of motivating. So do you? Yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> so they play at four, and then the second one will probably start about twenty minutes to a half an hour later after the completion of game one, and then on Friday, Brian and I will be at John Randall Field for our first home game there, uh, as the Huskies will be taking on the West Fargo Horace Hawks. Yeah, that should be good too. Yeah. Um, looking forward to see those guys play after a really good season last year, and a little disappointed that we didn't get to uh, to do the uh, the BW Storm softball game. Yeah, because those guys are they've been good here the last couple of years. So yep. nice to see them in action and uh, played a good Moorhead team and put up a good fight for a while, and they just kind of ran out of gas. So yeah, we'll uh, have the storm on sometime here during the year, but uh, yep. and we're gonna have uh, two track meets. I think two we got track on meets we, yep. we have on the schedule, and uh, we'll see. Track meets are fun; they're just long. So yeah. Uh, you can check out our schedule at www.threeboardersportsnetwork.com. You can click on the schedule page, and that'll bring you the uh, the current schedule. We've already had a couple of postponements and cancellations, but we'll get there. Yeah, we'll try it. My dad just sent me a text, too. Did he? So he's watching. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah. Well, happy he, birthday. He commented on the hat, so. Oh. Yeah. Because he created it. Well, I shouldn't say he yeah, created it. He, 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 he had the hat made. Yeah. So yeah. I think my niece had something to do with it, too. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, so he's watching. So, all right. Well, yeah. Sir James, again, happy belated birthday. So that's pretty cool that he's watching again this, this late. We don't night. need to make him any more famous than he already is, dude. I'm, I'm <laughs> telling you. So, um, so yeah. well, he's going to be on the wall of fame here. Some of the pictures you're having, maybe yep. he's, he's yep. actually going to be on the wall of he's fame. He's going to make the, uh, he's going to make the entry wall. So, yep. um, yeah. So, and those are those are done. I have to go pick those up. And, oh, uh, they are. Okay. Get those mounted, and then we have a couple other things that we can do. But uh, yeah, he's going to make the entry wall. So. All right. So no show next week. No coaches show next week. Brian's got his civic duty to do for the park board. Uh, we're working on some things for off the cuff episodes here. Hopefully this spring and summer. Uh, working with Raleigh and Julie on a couple different things. We Brian and I got a couple other ideas that we're working on too as we, well. And we we might come up with some kind of fun. So we'll, we'll see. So. Yeah. We'll, I hope it will be. Well, we'll keep it under wraps for now. All right. Let's so, do that. All, all right. right. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 4 o'clock from Breckenridge Cowboy Field as the Cowboys take on the Pelican Rapids Vikings, and that's at 4 o'clock. It will be on the air around 345. And then on Friday, we'll have the doubleheader with West Fargo Horace and the Wapiton Huskies at John Randall Field. First game is at 5 p.m., and we'll be on the air about 445. For now, for Brian Watson, I'm Joe Schreiner, Sir James Watson. Good night, everybody.